Let's welcome Rich Voss to the radio show. What's up, Voss? What's going on? You know, you know what's amazing? Oh. The this, this subway system. Why? It gets you around so quickly. It's unbelievable. I was, I'm staying downtown in Tribeca in a hotel. I got here in like 11 minutes. You normally not take the train, right? No, I mean... Obviously. Like, no, yeah, I mean... Yeah. Uh, You're not yeah. a subway guy, huh? No, it's amazing but what the it's... subway gets you around. That's good, yeah. I know. Why? It's just funny to say that. Well, people kind of know that already. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I just wanted to... I want to plug the yeah. subway system <laughs> so I can get some that. free cards. Next <laughs> week, we'll <laughs> introduce you to aircraft. I know. <laughs> it's amazing. I know. Oh, really? We're all excited. <laughs> <laughs> How about we introduce you to some updated clothing, okay? Hey, I'm cold. I'm hey. under the air conditioner. Oh, really? At least Shay alone. <laughs> I, know. I don't know why you're so cold. These guys are in t-shirts. Yeah, it's, it's, it has no, Maybe because it, all the alcohol came out of his blood. And <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm freezing. <laughs> it has nothing to you do with the room itself. you got three layers on. It's not the room. It's that fucking vent. That vent is blowing directly on me. Sweetie. With freezing cold air. Poor baby. If I was sitting, like, here, it wouldn't be as bad. I think you should. Well, you know really what you bad. do? Maybe shift over a little and pull your mic with you, okay? No. It's I'm called an audible. See, but I'm, I'm comfortable sitting here. See? This is my spot. Is it oh, my oh, spot! I gave you my spot next to Jerry! <laughs> I gave you my best to Jerry albums! <laughs> what do you want from me? I live in a hovel! Oh, is that, I, I messed his name up the other night. Rupert, what did I say? Oh, God. Pumpkin. I can only imagine. Pumpkin? <laughs> like the receptionist in the movie. So you sort of didn't ruin it. Uh, uh, Mr. They made Pumpkin? fun of his name in the movie, so you're safe. Oh, Mr. Pipkin? Yeah, Mr. Pipkin, Pumpkin. pumpkin. <laughs> but it's Pumpkin, right? Yeah. I'll wait. I'll wait. Love that movie. King of comedy here. Yes. There was a uh, my uh, my wife's sister got in a cab in in like northern northern Canada. I mean, completely out of nowhere mm. in Canada. And before she gets in the cab, as she's getting in a cab, the cab driver said, "Look, you might not want to ride with me because I'm listening to these guys on the radio that are quite offensive." Oh no! Right? And uh, she goes, "Who?" And, and he says, "Opie and Anthony." Now that's funny. <laughs> oh, and she shit. and and she said. My sister and brother-in-law do that show, and he didn't believe her. Right? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the story. But, <laughs> but here's why you got to love that cabbie. Canada, that's kind of cool. And yeah. he also, he was not even going to, he's not like, I'll turn this off. He's like, yeah. you might not want to get in, because <laughs> yeah. these guys are here to stay. That's a good fan. Yeah. Right Very cool. You did have somebody related to the great Rich and Bonnie. Yes. So uh, the Vosses, yes, TMZ, a and, relative uh, of the Vosses, and, and and TMZ cab. and the Jim Florentine roast, two of our biggest accomplishments yes. in the last. Uh, That's oh. not bad though. That TMZ is a big hit, and the documentary uh, oh. right around up, the corner, revving up, right? Ready I'm to telling come you, out. I'm going to get back into the improvs if it takes me forever. <laughs> <laughs> you don't work them? No. What are you kidding me? I don't work them. Yeah, in the afternoon cleaning. <laughs> I'll tell you this much. You gave me a preview of the documentary, and we watched it. It was awesome. I liked it a lot. And then my girl's like, I want to watch more. I'm like, that's all he gave me. So that's a good sign. That's good. I got a couple of clips, man. Yeah, I want, to, I want to see more of it. So uh, when, is it, when is the public going to see this thing? Uh, I don't know. When you write us a check so we can finish it. I, I might, How much do you need? I, I might uh, I, I think might find we could it. go for like 25 grand. That's it? That's it? Well, right now, to get through editing I'm and I'm going to want points and shit. Huh? I want 50. My, my 25 is going to turn into a lot if this thing hits. Do you understand that? Yes. Right? All right. Yeah, we'll talk. I'll, I'll write that check. <laughs> we'll talk. Are we going to do it o over uh, Twitter or we'll do it on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> do I get it I've with a sunset? Huh? Do I get, do I get to better. talk with a sunset? <laughs> not, not many sunsets lately. I'm trying to. But I, what people don't understand, I get, I don't know, a couple dozen every night. Every fucking night. If I night. got 500. 500 people would be blocked. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the reason for blocking. Um, I very rare. I block some people. If, if I think someone's be, if someone's fucking with me, I you know yeah, whatever. I bust yeah, balls. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, but if someone's a real cunt and I sense you're being a real yeah. cunt for real, then I block them. No, I, I block people that are obviously are not fans. Yeah, that's all. I mean, you could have an opinion and all that, but yeah. it's it, it's obvious the ones that aren't fans and just being complete assholes. Mm -hmm. And those are the people that get blocked. I don't know. I don't know web, how much it's money not a we need. Website. It's my personal fucking yeah. phone. You're reaching. Why do I have to deal with that? I have exactly. people in my own family that don't have the, the same number that you guys have through the Twitter. Yep. 
People on Twitter could get a hold of me that some of my family members can't. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I, I block people that are, are obviously not fans. No yeah. reason for that. It's not like you go out and fuck with people. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where are you, you going to be? Gotham Comedy Club, Rich? Gotham this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Gotham, which nice. is a beautiful club. Beautiful. Nice. Oh, God. Nice. Okay. Gotham. And then Very next good. week in Myrtle Beach. At the Comedy Cabana. Uh, Taking your, your uh, golf clubs? Of course. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I got the, uh, I got my game back, baby. Oh, playing really? Yeah. Yeah, you're Fuck playing yeah. good? Playing well? <clears throat> yeah, I'm not yeah. playing that bad. I played with uh, the club pro the other day, and yeah. I wasn't embarrassed. Oh, that's cool. so, so, so. saw me piss in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> you were squatting. <laughs> <laughs> God, Norton was on fire on that roast. That whole roast the other night, Norton, he just does not. I mean, he's, he doesn't. He doesn't fail. You're going on, and Bonnie had to go on after him. She killed. I knew she. Yeah, would but kill. she was so. She goes. I can't even listen to him. She was so nervous. I knew she was. She, she backstage. Bonnie goes. I don't, I'm a little worried about following. Like, don't. Mm. She, she's Bonnie yeah. is almost. She can follow anybody because because first of all she's she's just gonna tease you and everybody wants to hear what she has to say uh -huh. and her jokes were brilliant. It's almost like it's an impossibility that she's gonna bomb if she's uh -huh. prepared. She's not gonna bomb. Uh, Bob Levy, I, I he didn't think right though. I mean he got yeah. he, he didn't think he had a good set because he's Oof. nuts. But it's like Bob, you killed. He did good. Fucking auto dig. Everyone did great. The only one who had a tough time was the a club owner. But yeah. it's like he's not a comic, so it was the kind club of owner. I told him, yeah. yeah, the club owner. I said that set should have been in a package coming from Yemen. <laughs> <Yeah. It was laughs> so good. And then I looked at Levy. I go, your calendar. I go, your calendar has more holes than Artie Lang's torso. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was a good one. Shit. Oh, Bobby, that's pretty good. Voss had a great one, too. He, during the opening fucking few minutes, he goes, they were going to get uh, Greg Giraldo to do this, but he said, I'd rather be dead than be a part of that. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and they paid a nice tribute Brutally to Greg. Funny. Greg would have loved that. Yeah. That's a great roast joke. Yeah, Greg would have yeah, fucking went really nuts for is. that. It they, really uh, is. they showed Greg doing roast and his set on stage. He's so funny. It was so funny. Yep. Yeah. You know, yeah. and the guy who had to follow is was Greg's partner. Jesse Joyce was a writer for it Greg. It was unbelievable how good his he, stuff was. Greg, Jesse Joyce, I don't know if you guys know him. Mm -hmm. Uh he fucking he wrote a lot of Greg's stuff. They were partners and, uh, and like and uh he's a great writer. Uh, I mean, he had a funny stand up, but a great yeah, writer. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was just amazing. Mm. Uh, the stuff, and then Greg did it when we were in Montreal. Me, Norton, and Greg, and Bob. Greg, Greg, Norton, and I. Okay, and, and me too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're in Montreal, and he did the bit. Every time he did the bit about this, this the the the, the mail storts. Where they go snacks. Storts. Storts. Mail storts. Storts. Yeah. What's a stort? Like a stortus, only a man. A stort, okay? <laughs> a stort, you jackass. What a else would you call it? A steward. I call it a stort, yeah. Steward. A stort? What are you, a fucking prince? It's a stort. A All right. I like the fact Dort. that he thinks pronouncing steward right makes you royalty. <laughs> what yeah. are you, royalty? Royalty! <laughs> Danny got up you and... You pronounced that stort, word correct. Yeah. Danny got Danny's up and wrote it on the wall. Stort up on there. Gentlemen, stort your engines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that bit he does... Greg, every time you'd watch it, you just couldn't stop laughing. God, was he funny. Yes, he was a funny fuck, man. Yeah. Funny fucking guy, Sucks. man. Yep. Well, now that we're all depressed. Oh, I'm not yeah, wait a it, it, I thought that the roast stuff would be depressing to watch Greg, but it wasn't. It was really funny. Yeah. Like, you know how good you have to be to be dead for a month and getting laughs and everybody knows you're dead? Like, that's that, that's a depressing <laughs> sight. And his, his material was getting laughs from the yeah. audience, and they all know that he should have been there. And yeah, it was, it was well, good, man. It was a great fucking roast. Uh, well, if he was there, then oh, shit, the my roast. Career. Yeah, it was for Florentine. They would have done yeah. it anyway, but they just wouldn't have given They were going to do Jim's roast anyway. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, did Bonnie kill this fucking dummy? Ah, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, because there was a couple of... Uh, uh, an empty seat up on the, th the dais, and Bonnie goes, we left that seat empty uh, for Greg Giraldo. And... Uh, and Rich has actually been doing that in his shows. Every show, he leaves 150 <laughs> seats <laughs> empty in honor of Greg Giraldo. Oh, and he was yeah. actually doing that before Greg died. <laughs> <laughs> she fucking murdered this oh, boob. She hammered you. Dude, you, my girlfriend watched it. She's like, these guys are so mean to each other, but it, yes. it's always funny. Like, you and Bonnie, I'll say this, always 
You guys have great senses of humor about each other as a couple. It's fucking amazing oh, yeah. to watch. You could tear <laughs> each other apart. But they really do see each other as comedians, like yep. despite the fact that she has to tolerate his awful sexuality, <laughs> his closeted homo desires. <laughs> <laughs> closeted. <laughs> but it's amazing that you guys laugh like just like as two fucking comedians, and, and it's like he, like, Rich, never gets mad if somebody slams Bonnie. She doesn't get mad if somebody yeah. slams. It's really great to watch. Yeah. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I said when she gets naked, our bedroom smells like a fish fry. <laughs> I wanted to attack him for that too. Oh, like Jesus. you're fucking twenty five years in, and you're doing it. My wife's pussy smells like fish <laughs> joke. Wait, shut, shut up! up. Shut you're up way above said, that. Yeah, well, 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 no, I said a fry. I didn't say just fish. Oh, I, and there was a festival. Fry. Like my friend, my friend Dean's father used to say before he died of uh, alcoholism. He would say, uh, "It smells like fish. A tasty dish. If it smells like cologne, leave it alone." That was what his father would say. That, that sounds like something someone's father would say. <laughs> yeah. But he would always make me laugh. Let me give you some advice, son. He would smoke pot with us. He was a complete addict. Alcoholic. God bless his soul. My friend Dean came home and his father had vomited black stuff on the rug and was dead. Oh, shit. And then Dean caught the head from shooting heroin and he died of AIDS. Wow. But uh, yeah, it was a really Jesus. dysfunctional couple. Of a family. Black stuff, like his liver, whatever. Well, he was such a bad drinker. Oh, How old was the father? Oh, I guess in his late 50s, I'm guessing. Jesus. And then that stuff morphed into Patrice. Uh, what Why, was the Rich? We were having to, such fun. What was the bit you used to do about your dad when he was a Marine and he used to he used to sing a song? I don't, oh, it was uh, awful. Uh, what was it was awful? terrible. I'm embarrassed to admit it. Uh, <laughs> I'm emba I did it on TV, too. Ooh. Ooh. It was, uh, I, oh. oh. <laughs> this is for fighting. This yeah, is I know. For I, I would, I would, I would. <laughs> No. My dad was a Marine. He would introduce me. This is, again, many years. You know, mid, in the mid-90s. We understand. My dad would introduce me and my mother, and it would always be embarrassing because he would go, this is my wife, and this is my son, and he would go, this is for fighting, and this is for fun, <laughs> and grab his cock like the military. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You did that on TV? Yes, I did a couple oh, times. So I think I just got a little... You should. It's humiliating. Oh, you but I put on doing. another coat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was the Little League joke, which was really... I don't remember what it was. I do. What was it? it was real? It was that was uh, after a game, you know. I said my dad was a little league coach. Uh -huh. After a game, my dad would uh, take us out for snow cones or whatever, and take me to the woods. Oh yeah. <laughs> We, then, we, then we'd take, take, get in the car, park in the woods, and jerk off together. <laughs> That's funny. And, and he, would, he, would, he, would, he, would, he would put his put his face by my neck and go, don't take off the uniform. I like it. And I would go, but, Dad, it's all sweaty. And he would go, shh. <laughs> I would do that joke just to make him laugh. It never got more than a one from the audience. Yeah, I can see that, never. but it, it is funny. <laughs> it would never get anything over a one. Yeah, they were in shock. Hey, uh, we got to get Greg Proops in here. He's down the hall as well. Yes. Yeah, we have a very full house today. Yeah, we do. We've had a full week of uh, guests. We got yes. the situation coming in today, Rich. Wow. You watched the Jersey Shore? Uh, I, I haven't missed an episode. You don't watch? That's fine. No. I, I'm, I'm more of a Project Runway guy. He looks like the situation's father. <laughs> hey, yeah, man. You do. Play on words. That's oh, not no, that play. That's not play on words. That's not play on words. <laughs> yeah, play on words. You're you're a tard again. You're a retard. <laughs> I, don't play. Play. I know. I screwed up. I screwed up. I screwed up a slam. Come on, I'm already four oh, for four. That's hilarious. <laughs> it wasn't even that much of a joke. You really do the look. The best like part though is the look like his dad. You do. You shape of your head. I do. And your hair. Oh, and, really? uh, hi, Greg. Good looking and, uh, dad. Hello, and your abs. Oh, yeah. hi, What's up, Greg? Greg? Good to see you again. How Greg you doing, Greg? Studio as well. Greg? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Fantabulous. Greg and I, every uh, comics in town this week at, at Carnegie Hall or at Town Hall. So Greg and I, Greg's at comics and I'm at Gotham, and we're going to try to get our audiences to go to each of our shows. To go we're going to have a shuttle bus. It's oh. a little minivan. It holds about five people. Uh, so <laughs> it should have plenty of room for anyone who wants to come down. What are you going to do with the empty seats, Rich? Exactly. <laughs> We're going to have a puppet show together a little bit later. We want to congratulate everyone who's been invited to play at the New York Comedy Festival because uh, we're playing the outline 
Fringe comedy festival. <laughs> yeah, we're conducting on our own. I'll, I'll be at comics sense. in the meatpacking district, which is a hotbed of comedy, as you know. Oh, so yeah. will Norton, but he won't be at a club. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hello. Make How friends. Come, every club I do on the road is always the other club. It's never right. the, not not the play, same club. You're playing Skinkies? How come you're not playing Magnificence? <laughs> <laughs> it's always the other club. <laughs> oh, that's down by the river. Don't nobody go down there. <laughs> and sometimes I look in the paper to see who's at the other club, and I'm thanking God it's a Def Jam comic. Oh yeah, yeah. So at least I don't have to worry about. Don't have to worry know. about the crowd going over there uh, and living. <laughs> you know, like uh, New Year's Eve, we're at Mohegan Sun, and in the three hundred seat room or whatever. Oh, and, okay. and they and and they uh, put Chelsea Handler in the arena. She's already sold eight thousand tickets. Wow, New Year's eight thousand. Oh, Wait, this not eight. Oh, she's doing more than one Two show. Two shows. Thank you very Chelsea much. Chelsea is a fucking... You. I'm doing her show next Thursday, actually. Oh, so I, 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 I just got to say Chelsea. something. Again, Stevie is annoying the shit out what, of me. What? He what? walks in here what? like a chopper just landed, and he's getting into it. It's radio. Why do you duck down to give people their stuff in the console. Exactly. You're you like radar. If anything, you should take a lesson from Vic Morrow and jump up. <laughs> Why do you hate Stevie so much? I can't he stand Stevie. He obviously has Stevie. problems. I, I hate Stevie. Why Thank you, Stevie. Thank you I don't for know. bringing me my breakfast. You, why, would you, why were you ducking? I'm trying not to be a visual distraction. You're You're everywhere visual you go. distraction by ducking down. <laughs> Look, this gentleman walks in. He's got some food. He walks in quietly, puts it down. And then leaves. You're ducked you. down like fucking, uh, you're in Da Nang. What are you doing? You need a sweet and low? Yeah. Oh, I put you it need a low. sweet and low, Rich? Stevie, yeah. thank you, and that'll be all. Oh. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Get out of here now. All right. Before it gets how ugly. Can, how can you not do an hour on Stevie? We, we've oh, done we've 800 done hours on Stevie. Entire shows Now, on you're not that paying that young man? Hard, no. No, he's an intern. No, last man, week, his man, mom... Well, then he deserves it. Yeah, last week, his mom time. came in. She's been divorced for a while, and we had Troy dance very, very dirty uh, to Stevie's mom in front of Stevie. It yeah, good. really? And, and, and by the end of the show, she was kind of into it. She kind of wants some young. Oh women. yeah, yeah <laughs> by yeah. the end of the show. Yeah, she wasn't sure yeah. what was so going on I in the first grade group. So I'm being bit. honest with you. Yeah, but by the end of the show, she was looking at that young dick and going, "You know what? It's been a long time." Hey, who among us, right? <laughs> Hasn't yeah. succumbed. It was. It took an you entire show. Wore me show. down. I wasn't queer when the evening started, <laughs> right. but all right. We wore. We wore her down. And then she either walked out of here very happy with a giant dildo. So. It was more of a Stockholm Syndrome thing than it was her actually Stockholm. enjoying her time here. <laughs> she, right, right. she just gave she in. She began to relate to you. Yes. <laughs> My <laughs> captors, there's so much like me. <laughs> yes. They have no moral compass. Uh, she left with Isn't that what Patty Hearst, uh, they said it happened to her, even though she did go to jail? Yeah. yeah didn't they, right. that wasn't that her claim that it was Stockholm? Yeah, but that, I mean, she took it a little far. She bloody did go to jail. Yeah, yeah, she, she went did. to jail. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. With she, her, the her, world's her, worst defense lawyer. Her little beret and her machine gun. Yeah. Oh, standing yeah. there robbing a bank. Hey, you know who he had in yesterday? You probably know him. Uh, Chris Morris. What a genius. He's man. a fucking You know Chris fun, Morris? From, Greg works in England a lot. Um, oh, okay. So he, he had a show called Brass Eye there that was the most devastatingly hilarious. We comedy watched the show clip ever, yeah. in the, ever in the history of British comedy. Yeah, we were watching part of the pedo uh, show he did. The pedo one is tremendous. I like the, the good aids and the bad aids. I mean, he's so many jokes. <laughs> he he fooled so many aid. politicians when he did the cake episode. When he said it's a drug called cake, or he never said it was a drug. It's called cake, and kids take it. And he never called it anything but cake. And then he went to all these different members of parliament, and all sorts of people. What do you think of cake? And they're like, I'm against it and whatnot. And <laughs> literally, show up. It's a cake. It was the, just wow. like the pedophile one. It was a fucking hour that was just. Uh, uh, yeah, like, he is a funny guy. Totally man. admire him. And you know Peter Cook from Cook and More, right? Who is oh, also no. a genius. Oh wow. Well, oh yeah. They yeah. used to do radio together before Peter Cook. Yeah, died. he was Dudley Moore's Dudley uh, Moore's partner. Partner. Yeah. Oh okay. Peter he, Cook has the funniest joke in the history of mankind. They're talking about on one of the albums, uh, uh, Derek and Clive. Talking, about, they're just completely drunk, and they improvise these albums, uh, and they're hilarious for your listeners. <laughs> Derek and Clive live, and Derek and Clive ad nauseum, and he goes, uh, they're talking about what gives him a hard on, right? The horn in England. Uh, uh, the Bible doesn't have to give me the horn. <laughs> Peter Cook says, I wrote the Council of Churches. I said, dear cunts in charge of religion, your guidebook or whatever the fuck you call it doesn't have to give me the horn. And that, I always thought that was next to Woody Allen's My Grandmother Was Busy Being Raped by Cossacks. <laughs> Did he say that? <laughs> Fucking hilarious. But Morris is one of the few guys Cook would riff with, you know. Like, he's just tremendous. Yeah, he was a very funny... He's, he's got a new movie a film out. called Four Lions. It's going uh, to do about well. It's about bungling 
suicide bombers. Yeah. Oh, of course. It has to be some scabbers. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. never takes an easy, you know, he'd never right. do a sitcom about a, you know, a mom who just got remarried. Right. He's always yeah. fucking the most scathing scabbers. No romantic vitriolic. comedies That's going great. on there. No, 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 it no. really is great. Hey, what's, <laughs> what's the uh, show from England where the guy used to be a radio announcer and then he opened Alan up like a bed, bed and breakfast or something? Oh. Alan Partridge. I'm Alan Partridge. Coogan. We interviewed him, Holy Steve Coogan. Yeah. Is that funny? He, dude, he's fucking one of the funniest guys alive. But he he had different. It was diff the first one was I think, I'm Alan Partridge where he played a, a radio a TV host. Uh, I was saying you saying me or something like that, and then it got canceled. Knowing me, knowing you. Uh -huh. uh, right, knowing me, knowing you. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. And then it gets canceled. So then he does radio, and there's like three different jobs he has one each season. I've only seen the radio uh, and the TV one. It's fucking. Yeah. So but he does a laugh track in it, which you think you would hate, because it's like a one at one camera shoot, like Curb or whatever, with with, with uh, a laugh track, which would normally make mm. me nauseous, but it works for some <laughs> reason in this show. I don't know why it works, but it does. He was in a group with Morris, and they did a show called The Day to Day that was a news parody show, and Coogan was the sportscaster, and Morris was the anchor. And uh, Patrick Marber, who wrote Closer, mm. you know that movie oh. that had Natalie Portman in it? It's a play. He's a playwright. He was in the group, too, and uh, I forget who the woman was, Jim McKeegan or somebody, but they were mad, you know. A lot of talent in this one comedy show. And they did yeah, that. No so they, Chris Morris would be the stentorian anchor. Good evening and welcome to the dream. You know, and then the stories would be fucking hilarious. Like a train breaks down in England and it turns into like Lord of the Flies and they're eating each other after like an hour, you know. And, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. A train. Uh, we didn't know much about him when he came in here yesterday. I knew he, he was in a pretty big name. In the, so many funny guys in, in England we right, don't yeah. know yeah. here. Yeah. Like, Lee so, Evans, people don't even know here, yeah. and he's fuck, he sells out. He There's does like Wembley. two guys people know here. They know Russell Brand and they know Eddie Izzard. Wembley. Yeah. I, I, think, I think Jimmy <laughs> and Carr is. Gervais. Jimmy yeah, Carr so. is a very Jimmy funny Carr dude. Jimmy Carr is funny. Oh, Gervais is huge now. Of course, yeah. Ricky Gervais. I forgot him, but there's no. Like, I'm in a group. The, the group I play with in England, the comedy store players, Paul Merton's in the group. Paul Merton's enormous in England. Like, he would be like Seinfeld, and here nobody knows No his, one knows him. You know, they don't yeah. even know his name. Yeah. A lot of them don't want to come over because they make so much money there, though. What's the point? Don't you know? bother. Yeah. Only like Russell, you know, wanted to be a movie star, I think, and you know, <laughs> yeah. and Eddie just wanted to crack it. He likes Americans, you know. He, uh, yeah, I, I never got That's over like there either. Check. I've never made the, uh, I've never made the jump to, to England. I would like these to go are the once. best comics, by the way. We're not talking about, you know, people always go, English TV must be so great. No, it's not. It's, it's Britain's <laughs> yeah. hottest fucking it's fireman and Britain's funniest dog and shit like that. You know, it's the same as it is here, <laughs> right. but yeah. there are at the same time they allow Chris Morris yeah. to work on TV sometimes. Yeah, you know what the, I mean? So there's yeah. Mm, the shitty ones in England, we steal them and make them even easy. Easy, easy. Some. Yeah. <laughs> easy, uh, easy. That's my career. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm wait, uh, you're talking about the TV uh, shows yeah. that are really Yeah, Step huge, Toe and right. Ton, Son mm. became Sanford and Son, and right. uh, Man About the House became All Absolutely. the Family. Absolutely. Right. But right. I, I've always found, like, British American humor, Idol. there's some brilliant, funny British guys, but I've always found, as a whole... The way people think, oh, American humor is so stupid, British humor is so smart, that no. annoys me because it's not yeah, accurate. It's not true at all. Um, like, The Office was a, a work of art, but so is what Pryor did on stage. And, and I've never seen a British stand-up do what Pryor did on stage or what Carlin did. You know, so it's, it kind of balances. That's where I agree with you, Jim. People always say that to me about English stand-ups, and I say, the difference is we're, we've always been a little bit keener, I think, at stand-up. Because stand up is a real specific thing. Right. Maybe they're better at sketch or maybe sure. whatever, but like, that's, that's kind of a. The, the idea that we don't have an idea of satire and irony and they do somehow and that they only yeah. possess that, that always kind of rankles me. Like they're very cheeky and it's like, we get it. I and got they, it. They can be as base and vile as any, you know, comics and so can the audiences. Mm -hmm. They've but, conquered the planet. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> with all they do is invade countries. <laughs> <laughs> I love England. <laughs> I really do love yeah. them. They always <laughs> got our back too, no matter how wrong we are. They're and the best. Uh, Jimmy, I believe it was Till Death Do Us Part was all in the family. Till Death Do Us Part. And Man About the House was uh, Three's Company. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Oh, you know what? Yes, yes, okay, my mistake. Yes. I just want because people will start chiming in and hey, look, call Jimmy an asshole and them... then a fucking sex Well, how about a fucking... A fucking creep. So and... what? <laughs> so what? How about a fucking little high five oh, for Steptoe and Son? I know. That's no a good one. No one else got that one. Oh, no. wait no. a minute. Rich has a problem. It'll look be with bananas. bananas. What? You never get bananas on top of your oatmeal. It, they're they always brown. Look, they, oh, yeah, they look like little that assholes. Oh, that's because they did. <laughs> no, that was a mirror. the moisture. Right <laughs> Wait, now you're going to blame Stevie because his bananas are course, looking why? shitty on his oatmeal? Oh, Here comes Stevie. Uh, again, uh, stupid. Oh. He just spooned a banana onto his knee. Here comes Anthony's favorite person, I blind be Stevie. If that was a fucking truck hitting him. <laughs> Stevie, why are my bananas rotten? 
I don't know. I Did you look? Yes. Yeah, what is this, Stevie? Work in the place? He doesn't know. I didn't handle that. They I look didn't... like your little brothers. Look at these that fucking was, things. Uh... He's all confused. Uh, right, in, uh, in England, too, after I did a show, uh, when I was working there, I was selling CDs and, com and peep comics. So you don't do that here. Do they look down on comics for selling merchandise? The one thing they used to say when I lived there was, American comics talk about business and English comics talk about comedy. Uh, that we're a little more show busy. Yeah. And then the other thing that I would get, which always killed me, was they go, oh, you're a bit slick, aren't you? Meaning, well, meaning your act was boom, boom, boom. And, and the thing is, here, we all try... To, be, to be as professional as possible uh -huh. and come on and go bang, 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 bang. And there's a shambly ethic there where people come on and go, it's down a chemist, right? You know, fucking, a bit, it's like fucking bullshit, isn't it? You know, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. are you going to say the joke at some point? <laughs> <laughs> they always yeah. found they a little shamblier than American comedy. And I heard yeah. they'll set you up too over there, like uh, by giving, like, like the audiences don't like when your credits are read or something. I guess they think mm. it's kind of arrogant. So they'll go, what do you want me to say? And you're not, what, what's the key? Oh, to, really? You can't go like, like you've, you've seen them on well, bloody, 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 bloody. Right, yeah. 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 yeah, unless they've heard of it, and they haven't heard of every. I mean, the other thing I found when I first went there, I remember, was you don't shake hands with the M the compare, the MC. You don't shake hands with them. Like I remember coming yeah. on, and you know, how, oh, and, really? or let's have a hand for everybody yeah. you see tonight. You don't, you don't do that. No. They've already applauded because the the compares brought you on. Wow. And also the We're MC a bunch of pricks. gets paid more than the yeah. regular acts. So like if you do the store or whatever in London. They, th that guy gets paid the most because he has to go on in the beginning right. and then he has to go on after the interval because there's no waitresses. So we have an interval so they can go be a beer. And then he has to come on at the end again and do more time. And How like, is the comedy right? store? So I heard it's, it's great. Right? We went in there. It's, there. it's great. I did that room. I mean, at Christmas time, it's full of fucking thing. yahoos, but you know. I did that room, Jonglers in Camden, maybe. Yeah, Jonglers in Camden. So Town. before I go on, and this room is this, you know, it's an outside. It's yeah, innocent it's man. They put on an open mic or a new American comic before mm. me. So this guy stinks, and now the thrill is gone. Oh, okay, we saw yeah. the American, right. and I go on right after him. Oh, another dumb it, yank. Oh, uh, was it brutal? It was. He's I'm probably really shit. Bad. Give him a chance. Go yeah. mad. Go crazy. <laughs> Rich Boose. I <laughs> <laughs> was a boss, is it? So fucking does, what? Does your material translate over there? I mean, that's the big question. Everybody yeah. says that. I think it does. It you does, right? It does. Because yeah. even Seinfeld made that. Over. Oh my God, I'm going over. What should I do? I'm like, yeah. tell jokes. Right. One after the next. And they translate. Also, hit them in the first three minutes. Don't fuck around, you know. Yeah. Come big up front, you know. Load it up front, load it, you know. Because they, they'll give you five minutes, and then they'll hate you. But if you don't make it happen <laughs> yeah. in the first yeah. five minutes. Then I've you're never done. gone. I always thought that they were, they, they, I always had this weird impression that they just weren't going to enjoy love it. You. I don't know. I've heard, I've always felt the opposite. You're honest. Uh, they love that. I've always felt the opposite. You've got to go over there, Jimmy. I would Check like it to out. try it, yeah. Proof, so you, uh, are, are you like uh, doing the world at this point? Are you traveling the world with your comedy? or? Yeah, I'll be in the meatpacking district tonight. <laughs> I know, I know. Well. All by myself <laughs> alone on a stage looking around. No, and you got yeah. some Nova Scotia action happening soon, right? Yeah, I'm in Nova Scotia. I think a lot of the comics uh, who are playing Carnegie Hall, you know, I maybe it. they look at my schedule and think, okay, so I'm at Carnegie Hall, but Proops is going to Nova Scotia. Yeah, see? <laughs> You're a little half, glass half full guy. You're a little mm -hmm. angry at Gonna the get a little lobster Carnegie bisque and whatnot, a little uh, maritime frog. Cripps is a great comic. Yeah, very great Thank comic. Thank you, Grace. And as far I as the comedy, fe I know what you're getting at. As far as the comedy festival goes, you should be playing a bigger. Oh fucking no, room. no. I, I'll I say it for you. Comics. You're, you're not supp supposed to say that type of thing, but I will. Proofs is uh, what you know should be. Should be in a bigger room for the comedy festival. That's what but I'm comics saying. is a great club. It is. I'm not that, trashing those guys. I'm, I'm it's blessed. It's a great that, club. And I can't believe I said I'm blessed. <laughs> two shows tonight, two <laughs> shows I'm a rapper tomorrow. From the comics. early 90s. <laughs> I'm blessed. No, I, but I'm glad to be playing comics. But yeah, no. no. Then I'm in Nova Scotia on Sunday night. There's a casino up there. And they're very nice. I think of the last, oh, well, I'd never been there. And I went, and the la <laughs> first time I play, I walked on, I went, I've never been here before because I'm cool. Oh, and, shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, that didn't. They didn't, didn't get the sarcasm? Well. Uh, yeah, after a few minutes. I was down at the town clock today. Two children died of boredom. I mean, wow. <laughs> Halifax is the end of the yeah. continent. You know. <laughs> a lot How of crustaceans. Up yeah. How far up? It's way the pretty, fuck up there. It's pretty far. It's up. way up, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Almost like, as far it was as you're freezing going in April. Direction. They're going to be freezing tomorrow, I think, or Sunday, I think. Uh, it it's one. nice, though. You know, they're nice. Canadians are nice. They're a good crowd. They're nice. I had. I, it's not, funny. Not, I didn't remember. Next to one. Montreal was not as great as I remembered it. Like it was good, mm. 
But it was not, when I did the TV taping, I thought that uh, they were fucking dumb clucks. I, I thought it was overrated. The people um, who go to the gala, though, are like people who would have subscriptions to a theater, you know what yeah. I mean? They're real square. Yeah. Oh, okay, maybe I that was it. I looked out sideways there. I was, I, by the way, I became in awe of John Panetta after that, though, because I went on, I, mm. I, I had a good set, but I saw how they were not an easy crowd. They were tired. It was hot. They had been taping for a few. I was on next to last, and Panette came on. And that motherfucker murdered and got a standing ovation, a deserved standing mm -hmm. ovation. He is tremendous. If you, I, the yeah. first time I ever watched John Panette do stand-up, and he was fucking awe-inspiring. He was so good. Is he back to being fat, too? He's a big guy. He's not, as, he's not like, Did like he, he used surgery? to be. Did he surgery? I don't That's know. That's what I heard. Did he get the surgery? Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he got skinny for a while. He got really fucking skinny. The last skinny. time I saw him yeah. was, what, two years ago in Toronto. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I'm nice hearing. Nice fellow. But those things are perfect for him, like Montreal. I've yeah. seen him murderize a gal. I saw him come out and host one and do a number up front with something. Yeah, yeah. He, he hosted this one, too, and then closed it. Oh, fuck. He hosted and closed Dude, it? Dude, he fucking... The galas are really mainstream there, yeah. I think. They're very mainstream. And, he did a bit... What was his bit about? What's... It, it's like... It's just the, the subject for a bit. Uh, he... Uh, what 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 food preservative does he do a, a fucking bit on? Yeah. Uh, it's it's like I would never have thought to do more than one line on this. This <laughs> cocksucker has a ten minute closing bit on it. Wow, that it's, killed, man. Right? Dude, yeah. it was fucking annoying. It was so funny. I just kept hoping he would drop dead on the stage. It was fucking <laughs> <laughs> amazing. It was like uh, what's a, what's a preservative that they uh, oh I can't MSG or MSG one or one or of those. Well, that's why in Montreal you're playing to. It's really strange because it's a showbiz crowd, and then you're playing to a bunch of people who speak English in a town that speaks French. So it's as if you went to right. Calgary and looked for the French community, and <laughs> yeah. they'll all come out. And I mean, not that everybody doesn't speak bloody English there anyway, but I've always found that sometimes it can be a little. Depends on which joint you're playing, like Club Soda or whatever can be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what we did. That's what we did, a nasty show. That was sold out every show. That's yeah, the, it always like does. That shit. Oh, yeah. Always like that does. dirty shit. Yeah, that was... Um, it's it's funny. Showbiz crowds, I, I typically despise. Ugh. Like I told my manager, I want to do something in L.A. again soon. And I told him, not one industry comp, mm. not one. If I don't want one <laughs> fucking pussy agent or one fucking jizz bag from a network, not one seat <laughs> for those scumbags. I really, yeah. they're the fucking worst crowds. Half the times they don't show up. Fuck them. They don't want to come. If they do, but make them pay. They might discover you, They're repulsive. They might discover you, They're, yeah. they yeah. discover you, you know what? Honestly, dude, they're not... Really, I, I have such a hatred for them. They might get discovered. Them. Yeah. If you don't <laughs> want them to come. Greg Peck is a soda <laughs> joke. <laughs> Proops is laughing at that. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Proops is on TV, <laughs> man. Proops is doing very well on TV. Year, years ago, I was hosting a show that you're... It, when, when Bonnie was a newcomer on... I was hosting the newcomer set at mm -hmm. Montreal. You fucked her. Okay, go ahead. Let's get it over with. <laughs> you did, Rich, by marrying her. Chicken. What is this? <laughs> the crowd was, it was all industry crowd, and they were really being noisy, and I remember coming on and going, hey, everybody from Hollywood at the, and New York at the bar, you could shut the fuck up and give the comics a chance, and, I, and the crowd cheered, and everyone got mad at me, and they were like, you know, I was like, you know what? Fuck you. It's about, it's supposed to be the young comedians. Oh, this was in, Mon in Canada? In Montreal? Yeah, like oh, 90, yeah. oh God, I'm old. It was 93 or 94. It was in black and white. It was on the Dumont Network. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were on right after. The uh, of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're after the, after Edwin's Texaco hour. <laughs> Edwin. Very funny. <laughs> you work with uh, Selena, don't you? Uh, Selena what did they Go do? Selena Gomez? What show? What show are you I on? I work with Kiki Palmer. I'm on. Uh, Which one are you on? I'm going to tell you when I remember it. True Jackson VP is the one I'm on. Yeah. Okay. Where's that? I don't even know what that is. It's on. It's on, uh, it's on Nickelodeon. Don't yeah, watch okay. it, and you'll be arrested. It's like me watching a Justin Bieber video. Or something. Oh, I like it. <laughs> I feel like you're going to come to my house while I'm watching. <laughs> as oh, if I fucking watch one. That and that's not helping you pull in people. The Nickelodeon. I got the 11 year olds <laughs> rolling in, and that and Bob the Builder. I got the four year olds and the 11 year olds beating down the door. Did our parents come out, though? I mean, they parents you on know, Sometimes they do. My yeah. friend Ryan said to me, uh, hey, by the time they can come see you, you'll, you'll be dead. <laughs> right. <laughs> you never were on uh, Wizards of Waverly Wizards. Place? I was not on Wizards, Wizards wow, of I'm Waverly Place. Up. I seen you on Nickelodeon. All right. I made you're, the wrong you have connection. A, you have a nine-year-old? I got a I got a five month old. I don't. There's no reason why I should be watching that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Our show was funny. The guys who produced our show is the reason I did it because they they did uh, Mad About You and um uh uh. uh uh, bugger. No, I'm Malcolm in the Middle. Come Come on. On. The reason you did it is because they called you. Don't oh, the reason I did it is because I'm, I'm desperate and I needed work. I mean, and the mean? next reason was these guys were all right. No, we did a traditional sitcom. It was good fun. It's fun because 
you can't do knob gags, you know? Mm -hmm. You have to work clean on Nickelodeon, right. so it's like falling down and shit like that. Yeah. L wow. Like get gags from Lucy. And the stage we shot on was where Lucy shot, so oh, no I was kidding. pretty excited. Where's that? that? Paramount on page, uh, page 25. Stage 25. Okay. Ah, De the old Desi Lou Studios. It was Desi Lou. <laughs> Desi and her Lou. office was around the corner, Lucy's office. Yeah. What's in there now? Like cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Her and Marlo Thomas are in the men's room. <laughs> <laughs> What's in that place now? On 25, I don't know. I think they put up some skate ramp or something. Yeah, they robbed. <laughs> skate <laughs> and uh, there's another show next door. I went to Big Time Rush shoots on, I think, 26 okay. or 27. 26 was Danny Thomas's stage, and we would shoot on there, too. And that fucking stage was evil. I don't know what the fuck evil Danny Thomas wrought in this world <laughs> i know about the coffee table and all that but man the air conditioning never worked it was a we literally had a one of the new age uh, pas go in and and like burn a joss stick you know like yeah just to, to get fucking, rid of the evilness yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. like that place you'd walk in and a sandbag would fall on your head you know <laughs> <laughs> fuck did danny thomas make some sort of deal with the fucking devil or something you know we used to shoot tough crowd on the uh the sony studios on uh 53rd or 54th right. and that's where they shot a lot of the exorcist was shot in that building Good where we Get out of here, really? Yeah, and uh, I believe Nirvana taped Unplugged there. I think I've said this on the air before, but I think a good part of The Exorcist was taped in that. There's so much history in all those places. Yeah, like, every single one They just one never go away. They yeah. never move. <laughs> no, places we, never fucking move. When we <laughs> first shot Who's Line in New York, it was where they did Bilko, and I was excited. Bilko! Be no on kidding. All measure, because like, that was my favorite sitcom. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah, in the first place we shot uh, Who's Line in England at Teddington Thames, I didn't know anybody's picture on the wall except Benny Hill in the fucking middle, man. And I was like, Benny Hill's right here! You know? <laughs> oh, you shot? <laughs> Uh, your show started the very, in? very first series of Who's Line we shot at Thames. Remember at the end of his show, there'd be the little bridge and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was where we shot the first one. And I just, Anyhow. I remember not yeah, recognizing. You know, when you first go to England, all their TV stars, and you're like, who the fuck is it's weird, right? Who's <laughs> Bruce Forsyth? You know, and then do they know American TV stars or no? Benny Hill, huh? Do they know American TV stars or no? Absolutely, they, but they don't know some. It's weird. Like they never got the Honeymooners, but they got Bilko. So, wow. like, all the yeah, comics love Bilko, but then you say, well, what about the Honeymooners? They're like, never seen it. They just oh didn't show it. Wow. In Seinfeld, when I lived there, they were showing it, like, 2 in the morning on Sunday. So, like, wow. they never really got Seinfeld. So I mean, Jerry, you go there, and they know who he is. Sure. He's a star, but... Chris Rocks, and he sold out arena. He, he did the... Uh, he was doing, like, 17,000 seats for me over there. Chris. He well, sold. he's a movie star, so... All right, right, right. Yeah, he could do it true. that way. Like, of Harlan, course. they didn't know, and he didn't really go over. He didn't go over? No, but Stephen Wright, emo, huge, you know. Carlin didn't go over there? Not that I know of. How come, uh, did I mean, he go Hicks, obviously. Wait, How you, said he, go oh, you yeah. said he didn't go over. You mean he didn't make the trip or they didn't like him? No, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. I don't think he physically went over and ever oh, played there. Like, So okay. they didn't know him. Like, I remember doing a, a radio show about Carlin because a producer said to me, well, who's your favorite comic? And I want Carlin. And they're like, well, who is he, you know? And so, like, I had to do a show, like, sort of explaining Jeez. who George Garland was. And How, How about that? Pryor? Do they know him from maybe yeah, from the movies? Yeah, they know him from the movies, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And That's his, weird, The right? movies are the weakest part of his career as far, you know, as exactly. far as what he contributed. No, the stand-up is where all the, you know, the genius is. Hicks they knew really well, and Dennis Leary, I think, when I first went there. Well, he didn't, did Dennis get popular in England? Like, didn't he kind of, or find himself in England and come back or whatever? Yeah, I guess. I, I, know, I know Hicks got really popular there. Yeah, he certainly did. Sort of came back. I'm a big Hicks fan. Did Me you, too. Did, I, did I you ever perform to him with yesterday. Him? They keep talking about some movie with Russell Crowe or something? Or is yeah, that just I keep hearing it. Yeah, it's a terrible maybe. idea because, <laughs> yeah. first of all, Hicks would, I think, not like it. <laughs> Not that I knew him that well, but I knew him well enough to know that he wouldn't fucking like a Hollywood movie made about him. Relentless <laughs> is my Relentless is my favorite comedy CD. He's he's By savage, Bill Hicks. Man. And was he funny and really young, you know? I was older than him and he died way before me and um you guys came up? Too. Did you come up together, drugs? Greg? Huh? Did you guys come up together, kind of? Or? Oh, no, no. He was from Texas. Yeah. Uh, I met him in San Francisco, and I used to have a joke uh, where I'd go, the Union, it was about Ken Burns' PBS Civil War show. That'll yeah. give you an idea of how long ago this was. Yeah. Uh, the Union met the Confederacy here in a small town in Kentucky called Kill Peopleburg. <laughs> and so Hicks called me Kill Peopleburg for a couple of years, right? <laughs> We're doing a gig in Florida, and he comes up to me and goes, Greg, I know your name's Greg. And I go, Bill, I don't give a shit what you call me. You're my fucking hero. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he'd always go, hey, kill people, Berg, every time he saw me, because he liked the joke. And I was like, I was excited he spoke to me, Wow! because I, I thought he was so goddamn funny. We were working in Lubbock, Texas, me and him, and his girlfriend just dumped him. So in Lubbock, to get hookers, you know, you'd ask the cab drivers where to go, and they would take you. 
So I get, he goes, you want to hang out with me? And I just take a ride and sit in the car while he... Yeah, sure so, he did. No, I didn't... I, this was I, before Bonnie, you could oh, say. Oh, no, no, no. I yeah. wasn't getting a hooker. You, you I sucked I his dick in a wig. <laughs> no. <laughs> probably yeah, probably so pulled the cab driver. He knocked the cab driver. <laughs> the cab driver. <laughs> the cab fare, yeah. the cab driver. Fixed his dick in a hooker. Oh, God, hold on. We're going to hear this joke seven <laughs> oh, times. Oh, shut the fuck up. Let us oh, enjoy it, you asshole. So he goes... Cab driver takes Hicks to the first place. And the hooker opens the door and goes, you're a cop, and slams the door on his face. Yeah. Then we go to another place, and she opens the door, and she goes, you're too young, and slams the door. And he gets in the car. He does 10 minutes on stage the next night, how hookers won't fuck him in Lubbock. Oh, my and God. It was, he just came up with 10, yeah. or, and it was just so... I'm watching him going... I'll never be this funny as long as I live. You should say that when you watch every comic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> watch an executioner. Yeah. Right, <laughs> you should say that when you watch a documentary on crib death. <laughs> I'm never going to be this funny. <laughs> <laughs> God, this SARS uh, thing's kicking my ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ah, fuck, I love that guy. Uh, he was all right. No, well, he was, was hilarious. There was a, in England a few years ago, there was a comic who did a, like, what if Hicks had lived and extrapolated and wrote a whole act about Bush and shit. And I never went and saw it. I remember reading about it. And I, the only thing I can think of was there was nothing I know Bill would have fucking hated more. You'd have gone down there with a gun. Like, oh, you're right, going right. to put words in my mouth yeah, after you're I'm dead? Speculate what I would have said yeah, yeah, about this. Yeah, because you're so, you and know. With all due respect to Hicks, he's not the only guy that talked about social yeah. or political no, issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guys, like, there are guys that, that, this is what bothers me about, not Hicks, but people who love Hicks. Right, the canonization. Because guys try to do it. I think what he was doing, from what I've heard about him, I never met him. Was very sincere, and he was just, that was the, the comedian yeah. he was, and he was very socially aware. And but when guys try to be hicks, and they think that they're hip by clearing the room, it's like yeah. you're not clearing the room doing your act; you're attempting to clear the room. Where he's a guy really doing his act, right, and fucking offending yeah. people by the content in his act. There's it, a huge difference. It was also yeah. his delivery was really good and unique and stuff. He'd like. It looked like he could give a shit if he was up there or not. Well, no, yeah. You know, he'd just walk around and yeah. yeah. He. He went on stage at Catch when it was the hottest club in New York, and Brenner just got off, and they loved him. Brenner was, you know, on fire, and they loved him. And Hicks walks on, he goes, yeah, I, growing up as a kid, I used to watch Robert Klein and David Brenner, and I'm thinking, if these fucks can do comedy, so can I. That <laughs> <laughs> was right after him. That was great. <laughs> that was, then he started doing that bit about Nancy Reagan, the anorexic kind yeah, of, yeah. that whole bit. The rule, people... It's like someone yelled fire in the room. <laughs> they were running out in droves, and he just and he gets off stage and he goes. Or, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Rich Fox. <laughs> oh, it's oh, almost man. a callback for me. Come on, Rich. That's not bad. Rich, Rich, Rich is very it's funny. Call, it's a callback. Uh, we like those. We like callbacks. That's what they. That's what you do in comedy is callbacks. Okay, you're doing it for twelve fucking years. Unfortunately, you never get one with an audition. I can't. I can't get a callback to something I never auditioned for. Yeah. Okay, I want to get the call yeah, to have a chance to get a call back. back. What do you get? An audition? What the fuck is that? Do we have, oh, we, do we have to break. Was that front here or no? Yeah, we should break. Uh, right. We got Ramirez is coming in. Let and, me uh, organize this. We got. Greg Proops at uh, Comics Tonight and Tomorrow. Highly recommend you see Greg Proops, a great comic that doesn't come around these parts uh, too often. And then, of course, Rich is uh, hilarious as well, and he's going to be at the uh, Gotham Comedy Club. So you got to figure out. One night you see Greg, and the other night you see Rich. Do, do both. Do, do a comedy weekend. Why not, right? That's Perfect. what I'm saying. And you guys are going to continue, Greg? you got time, right? You're hanging? Yeah. Efren oh. Ramirez is next, I guess, and then the situation at 9. Yeah. Oh, oh you got the situation. Boy. Yeah. yeah. Snooki oh, was on my boy. plane yesterday. Oh, oh really? wow. Yeah. You, yeah. you sat in cargo? <laughs> <laughs> was she, was she was loaded? an Oompa Loompa airlift. Yes. <laughs> 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 she was. All right, well, she's quite dinky. It's time for Owen Day. Recently on The Opie and Anthony Show, lovable buffoonish intern Blind Stevie invited his mother into the studio. What did ONA give her? Was it A, a brand new thick 10 inch dildo, B, a lap dance from a nearly naked staffer, C, a hard time about her son's horrendous looks and severely lacking skill set, or D, all of the above? The answer in moments. The Opie and Anthony Show. Sirius XM. 
Another full house today. We got Rich Voss in studio. Uh, it's on. Rich was doing stand-up for us out of nowhere. I don't Rich know why. Just, he, Rich went to talk to us, and there was a mic next to him, and he just grabbed the mic and started talking into it. It wasn't on or anything, but he felt more comfy standing up and feel more comfortable talking like that. That's how I yell at my kids. That, with I get a mic and I sit them in front <laughs> <Yeah>. of me. <laughs> Dumb daughter's leaving college. She's leaving college? Yeah, she's leaving. I, to I told her, go to community college for two years. No, yeah. I want to go here. So I spent all this money for her to go down south to a college, uh -oh. right? And after the first semester, I don't like it down here. I want to go to community college. Say okay. why the fuck? So you only lost out on one semester? Yeah, which a is pain? about, I'm happy in the long run, but I don't get this whole college thing. I Dude, just we're, no. college is horse shit at this point. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it, it puts everybody in debt, either the parents or the kids. It's, you know, $100,000 $100, in debt. On average, that's the goal. Uh -huh. So you you leave college and you already owe a hundred thousand dollars. It's all you got to do is, if I came in here and said, "Hey, my daughters want an intern," you guys would do it in a second. One, because you would smash them, but whatever. There's Efren. And, uh, oh, there he is. And uh, How you doing, sir? What's up, Efron? And uh, or Efren? Efren. Efren. <laughs> what's up, what's up man? <laughs> love How are you guys? What's going on, brother? <laughs> I'd rather sit. But star of Eastbound and Down. <laughs> I'm yeah. calling you the star of the show. Hello. All right. How are you? How you doing? That's Rich Voss. going. Rich Voss. Rich Voss. Dot com. Greg Croops. No, that's all right. No. That's Greg Croops. Greg, how are you? Very yeah. funny uh, stand-up comic. My love. Are you kidding? Yes, we don't. You know? Are you kidding? I've watched him on TV. The yes. Improv actor. Of course, comedian. You better be Efren too. Oh. Yeah. Right. Oh, you're not. Yeah. yeah. Are you? You're not your brother, right? <laughs> I know you do that. Brother, well, do you thing remember last so time you were on the show? He, he admitted that. You That's know, he's got, a, he's, he's got a twin brother, and then maybe the twin brother does some of the interviews. <laughs> Which is pretty goddamn funny. What's your twin brother doing right now? He he's on Regis. He's sleeping, I think. <laughs> he's sleeping, you sure? Yeah, yeah, I hope so. You know the good thing about being twins? You How about you talk into a mic? Yeah, get a mic that works. <laughs> the good thing about being twins, you don't need a mirror to jerk off in front of. <laughs> uh, sometimes you do, because then it becomes an orgy. <laughs> What are you doing, Rich? Yeah, why would you, who wants yeah, to do well, that with their brother? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah that's a good oh, one. Really? <laughs> it's kind of like going into the woods after a Little League game. Shut up, it's a joke, stupid. I know. Oh. Yeah. Uh, You're so defensive. Yeah, How about that who we'll lighting is it anyway, that. huh? Yes, yeah, eh? It's good, isn't it? Yeah. I saw it religiously. Thank you, buddy. Religious. God, I worship you, my friend. How kind of you. Yeah. And I got to say, because you're an improviser, and it takes an artist to truly work with their imagination and go, really go, creatively. I thought you were I think you're right. I got to say you really considered great. that before. We, we've <laughs> an improv. Have a little more respect, you guys. <laughs> 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 we just felt like we needed to bring that up. It is because, I guess of, we because of you and all the rest of the, all the rest of the guys that uh, uh, they're dead my friends way. and I. Yeah, my friends and I actually did a bunch of improvs on Venice Beach. Don't really? You know, and we started to study improv and do it all over Los Angeles. Uh, this is prior to Napoleon Dynamite. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but what was uh, that? but it, it actually <laughs> gave me the freedom to to create and explore that world as opposed to really getting. I mean, I grew up in East LA, so right. uh, doing theater and doing all that work just got me. Well, you know me my buddy Diedrich Dater then? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, of freaking uh, the martial arts guy in Napoleon Dynamite. Mm -hmm. Man, another yeah. another <laughs> great guy, another great guy. And actually, we were, we shot. We were doing a sequel to, or, or the remake to Revenge of the Nerds, but it just never happened. Oh, really? Yeah, we, we, we shot for about a month down in uh, Georgia, and then they just... They just it. scrap it? Wow, was it yeah. really awful, or was it just that they ran out of money? No, no, it was great, actually, but what happened was, I think Fox was uh, changing the, uh, all the people who were involved in the, in the studio, so Fox Atomic was completely cut out, and oh, really? any project under those uh, independent... Uh, uh, Production companies were just completely cut out. Where does that Which shit was, go? Where does a month of shooting go? What do they I, just, you, you do know, they just put right? it in a yeah. spool somewhere and put it in that warehouse from Indiana Jones? <laughs> <laughs> what, they, what, what, what unions will do when, when you're doing a non-union shoot, if they want you to get union guys, they'll let you shoot for a day. And then fuck with you the next day because then you've wasted a whole day oh, of filming right. yeah. if you just ah, move locations. Sense. So it's one day of shooting is expensive. A month must be horrible. Jesus Christ, really? I show best knowledge. <laughs> Must cost a lot. What about Josie? How, you know? you, Josie's very well indeed. She's been on EastEnders for the last couple of years in London. She's yes, phenomenal. She is phenomenal. Josie was the brunette on the English sure. version. And yeah. a very good buddy. We stay with her when we're in England. You guys know everybody. I know. They all yeah. know a lot of people I don't know. I don't know anybody. I know Voss. <laughs> hey, so, hey, hey, you're in New York. Lies, a lot of people. <laughs>
<laughs> so you're on Eastbound and Down. I love the show, but I got to be honest, I'm way behind. <gasps> I got it all DVR'd, my friend. Yes. I will catch up. Yes, so I... but it's not the same, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you're promoting the uh, the season finale, right? Is yeah, that yeah. this Sunday? It, it, yeah, it's this Sunday. Wow. How quick that is. How many oh. episodes do you guys do in a season? We did about, uh, uh, well, the first season about six episodes, and this year was seven. Yeah. It's so, a weird number, seven, yeah, right? They, Isn't you know? it? You think they'd order twelve, eight or ten? Yeah, right. HBO is odd though. I mean, yeah. they don't have the same. Where do you guys shoot? We shot actually the second season. We shot that in Puerto Rico. Really? I know, tough place. You know, hot and beautiful women. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it was, and and actually HBO was asking for thirteen episodes actually for the second season. But Danny uh, McBride's just blowing up. But the, he doesn't yeah, have the, exactly. He doesn't have the fucking time to do everything he. The, they the, to do. I think the writers and even the directors, uh, I, it's not about you know the quantity, but the quality of what you put on every single episode. Mm -hmm. And it's very specific, and these guys know what they're doing. So when I came on board, I was just uh, fortunate to be a part of these guys. So what do you think they felt that they couldn't creatively do the show justice if they did six episodes on top of the seven? They probably figured they would water it down or shit. Yeah, yeah, because like you know, on TV, you're telling a specific story, and then and you go through the world of, per se, Kenny Powers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, and I think that, that the final episode of, of, of uh, second season is, it, it, it was a surprise to me and how it ends, uh, because I was such a big fan of the show in the first place. So, um, to know the fact about what's going to happen, it just... Wow, uh, those We're all so be fans pleasantly surprised. surprised. Yeah. Why did you shoot in Puerto Rico? Was it taking place in Puerto Rico, or was it just no? It, well, it no, it takes place in Mexico. In Mexico, so oh, okay. but we couldn't go down to Mexico because because um, the cartels and the fact that uh, <laughs> yeah. they're beheading people now. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. probably better to stay away from Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because then maybe I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to come back myself. Your fucking trailer would get hijacked, <laughs> and you'd have to ransom your own equipment. Yeah, Mexico is a frightening place right now. <laughs> are you, where are you from? I'm uh, from like what gang? No. <laughs> no, I just didn't know you were from Mexico. I didn't want to shit no. on Mexico. I think I said East L.A., right? No, East L.A., okay. man. Yeah. yeah. I was in a gang in school called the Devil's Advocates. We tried to see the other guy's point of view. <laughs> <laughs> Very unsuccessful gang. <laughs> hey, you're a faggot. I can kind of see where you're coming from. Right now. Exactly. I am wearing a bow tie and the back is cut out of my trousers. Yeah. I'm making a Waldorf salad here on the playground. <laughs> East LA is rough, isn't it? Rough. Ru yeah, r r really rough. Uh, okay. uh, you still got family in East LA, or, or are you smart enough to I get do them out have of there? some cousins there. But yeah. you got mommy and daddy and your brother out of there. Yeah, I mean, I, like after Napoleon Dynamite, I bought my parents a house. Oh, you're one of those guys. Nice. Yeah, oh. you know, yeah, so the movie gave you buy your parents' house money. Yeah. Well, what Damn. happened was um, when the movie was made, uh, we all signed contracts for royalties. But when the studios bought it, we had to have re renegotiate our contracts. So everything changed. Oh, shit. And because I was a union actor, I said, wait, 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 they're bringing my team real quick. So, and it was a great ring negotiation. And, and nobody money. knew it was going to blow up as it did. Yeah. So, once true. they had blankets and chonies and bras and dolls and action figures, bobbleheads, they, they had everything. And then, because of the animation next year, it's just going to get really crazy. Yeah, they're awesome. making an a animated uh, version. Yeah. And you're going to be of, voicing. And you're, you're getting a piece of all that? It's, it's oh, pretty sweet. Shit, man. <laughs> right Good for on. you, man. I like to hear <laughs> stories right like that God. instead of, we never got another dime. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Give us all hope. Again. Yeah. Gives everybody hope that you, you hit a project that just makes a shitload and of you money. You can renegotiate. <laughs> I, yeah, just I, mean, got a, I just right. got a $26 check from uh, Last Comic Standing. They're playing on uh, Fox Reality. Oh. 26 bucks. I'm not fucking around. You should send them yeah. back 50 <laughs> Do you know I still get checks? I get like a $5 check. Like whenever Lucky Louie is released overseas or somewhere, I get like a $6 right. check per episode. It's Bulgaria. kind of humiliating. Yeah. Yeah. I have to, I have to write it. Yeah. It's like yeah, I almost don't want to fucking... I don't want to put it in the bank because they probably think that's all I made. Like, well, this guy was <laughs> low. I got a check the other day for $0.32. Cents. Nice. And how much is a stamp? 44 or whatever? Yeah. yeah. Like, really? Why don't you wait till it accrues a little? You're really gonna waste the stamp money to send me a check for thirty-two cents? And I was sad. I would imagine you yeah. would be. I'm getting Voss a chair so he can move up because he feels bad sitting in the back there. I don't oh yeah, feel, yeah. You know what? I don't no, feel bad. Good, no, yeah? no, good, I don't good. feel bad at all. I, because I'm a little out of it today. Oh, I had a rough a night seat. last night. What, what happened, happened last night, Rich? Oh, <laughs> I, I tell went you, to, I went to a party. <laughs> How is that bad? I went to a party. Well, I ate a lot of shrimp. It was so a lemon party. What's the lemon party? Oh, oh you want to see oh. it? Oh. Yeah, but look at your faces, my so God. I'm afraid. It's a very famous photo. Show them lemon I don't party. Have, I, I don't, I'm not online. You're it's not a very online. famous photo of uh, 
Just three old men and Greg. Can you in. pop? Uh, can you just Google lemon party while you're over there, please? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I want to see it. No. Come on, you've never seen lemon no, party. No, I love oh, this shit. I was at a Tupperware party last night and I sold a ton of stuff, so I feel very positive today. <laughs> could someone how run you, in here and show lemon party? How do you get to? How do you get to? It's well, a keyboard on... and a fucking. Oh. Mouse no, and I get a monitor. It. You're I get it. Let it rip. And I have it's not, it's not, it's not violent. Is that Tupperware party recyclable? <laughs> Could you get yeah. a lemon party yeah. up there, please? Yeah. It yeah. is. Thank you. I'll do lemon party. If you burp it, it stays fresh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you asked what lemon party is, sir. I am running toward him. <laughs> That All way right. I don't have to look at it. Yeah, come on. Oh, you, you won't be... Uh, I'm afraid of this situation right now. Me too. We have a lot of uh, <laughs> questions about this photo, too. So yeah, I had a little trepidation. Lemon oh, party. Lemon party. Yeah. Oh, oh that's, see that. That's, oh, it's yeah. not like the Boston Tea Party, yeah? It, it's kind of like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see? Same Memphis participants. Oh, what, they're now <laughs> making money off the stupid photo? The Boston Tea Bag no, Party. There's <laughs> Lemon Party. There oh, <laughs> oh, my God. That's your Lemon Party oh. picture. See, now I don't want to see that. Oh. <laughs> it's, not, it's not, believe me, it's nothing. It's yeah. good. Oh. But look at his oh. he's, he's got, he's he's got a nice hog for his uh, age. I hope that's not a scratch and sniff. <laughs> hey, uh, Rich, you can relate to that. That guy looks like Carl Palmer, doesn't he? Oh. <laughs> Arnie. Wow. Arnie's in, in Lemon Party. Oh. <laughs> now, uh, the question we always pose is, who is Who's the, the gayest? gayest? Who's the Who's gayest, gayest guy in, the picture? in that picture? The two nah. guys kissing. I, which yeah, one, though? Well, the guy laying one. back kissing <laughs> is having his nipple touched yeah. and getting his dick sucked. This one laying back is his eyes are closed. Uh -huh. This one's eyes are open. So the one who has his eyes closed kissing is more into it. Isn't that amazing? Because the guy's sucking the dick, you don't even... He's, he's out of the picture. Yeah. yeah. Like, what about the guy who it's took the picture? How about that? <laughs> yeah, a bit of a judgment <laughs> call on who's gayest in this photo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, splitting hairs, if you don't yeah, mind the, the really phrase. Uh, I don't know what comic. There's a comic that says... This is his line. He goes, you know you're gay. When you're sucking some guy's dick and you're thinking of another guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right on. There's Lemon Party. Oh, that's that's disgusting. Disgusting. Why don't you click off that phone? Oh, I can't please. Believe. Now it, I can't look at my grandfather it, in his face again. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that Grandpa from the Munsters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he kind of does. Like <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what are these guys oh. on the bottom doing? Is that. Uh, it's oh, just one of those know, websites that. Yeah, a guy with his legs open, orange shorts. And, Tight yeah. orange slacks. Yeah. Holy Jesus. I know none of this. I, I'm a virgin. You asked. Internet. You <laughs> no, I, no, I know. Are you really not what? a perv on the internet? Uh, no. 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 That no. guy on the bottom. No. His dick was so big. If you, had oh. a dick, if you had a dick that big, you can't be funny in life because you have too much confidence. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, He's got works. a point, actually. I'm telling you, when it's... If you got a dick like 12 inches long, you got too much, con you can't, there's no insecurity. There's, there's no desire, you, you're not overcompensating. Oh, I'm not down that. <laughs> 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 bam, 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 bam. <laughs> I found that I have a giant wand and I can dominate the audience with it. And tonight at comics, all seven of those people are going to get dominated by it. <laughs> he's not horsing wand. around, folks. Yeah, yeah, if you have a giant dick, it's probably difficult to be motivated. Because you do comedy. I first started doing stand-up to, to meet girls. That's why I did it. Yeah. You know, I start, and when you have a big dick, you don't need to. So what are they doing for a living? You need, need to meet girls? People. Huh? Huh? You need to do comedy. I need to come to the girls. Yeah, but if you have a 12 inch dick, you don't need to do jokes. You just fucking yeah, wear just tight slacks. Pull it out anywhere. Wear tight slacks. What do you think the big <laughs> dick guys job. are doing? Huh? I don't need the roll of coins. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> what, what do you think the big dick guys are doing for a living? <sighs> Accounting? No. What, no. Kind of, what kind of profession do you think they're in? I don't know. Sales? Because a lot, of, sales them are, guys? A lot yeah. of them are fucking confident enough to sell you bullshit. Mm. I don't probably, know. I don't know. Uh, probably uh, ad men, you know? Yeah, you think? Is that Tupperware? The thing? Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, Tupperware. <laughs> I'm watching that show I don't, know. I don't now. think advertising people are big. Certainly they're not in show business. So you're tired today, Rich, because mm -hmm. you had too much, too many shrimps last I just, night? I'm just tired. I was up late. It's hard to sleep in a hotel. You know, you get, it's uncomfortable. And Hotels are very comfy. I love hotels. Not the ones I stay in. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, what hotel the blinking red neon sign on the window. That's not a I hotel. Look, it has bars and a stainless steel <laughs> toilet. I, I, I look out the window and see Lee Remick walking to the Lee bar. Lee Remick? <laughs> 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 there are two dead twins at the end of my hall beckoning me all night. <laughs> the elevator filled up with blood. Other than that, it was charming. Yeah. Perfect. Couldn't yes. buy a drink. At least you had a good book to read. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in a nice uh, hotel.
Yeah. Yeah. Time, yeah. yeah. What hotel? Got lucky yeah. on Priceline. Rich, ask a question about Eastbound and Down for our guests, please. Uh, yes. Because we got the big season. I want to ask about yes. this, and this is true, and I'm serious. Yeah. Uh, everybody's raving about this, so how can I get uh, the first season for free on DVD? Who do, who do I talk to? You talk to me. Okay, there you have it. There's my question. Because we want to, that's all we do is buy uh, seasons of stuff. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. just got, we're waiting for Damages Season 3 to come out. Damages? Uh, uh, the other one, He's Mad married. Men. Yeah, we want yeah. Mad Men uh, because there's nothing better than watching a professor cook crank. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I just finished Sons of Anarchy. So we want to yeah. do Eastbound Down. We're doing Mad Men. You know, that's all we do. Because the more of this stuff I watch on TV with with Bonnie, I don't have to talk to her. You know what I'm saying? Oh, if you keep the TV yeah. going. Why don't you, you know, guys just get the Because you've been married no, for we're getting so along good. long. Getting Rich and I are going to go see Colored Girls at the matinee today if you guys want to join us. Yeah, we're just going to cry that. and cry and eat Mel I want to see that. Getting bad reviews, by the way. Well, we oh, let them man. say what they want. Yeah, we I, saw Joe Magnolia's just... together. Yeah. We called the whole <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. I bet there's a scene in that movie where they dance around and drink wine and talk about how awful men are. I bet there's that scene. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> when, <is it? laughs> I hate when girls are in like the living room with this subtle lighting and their big wine glasses and they're talking and laughing and then someone puts on a, a song and they're like, oh, and they all start by Michael Bolton and dancing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just with some crappy song and they just start dancing. And why is that again? Why does that happen? I don't know because it's a chick flick. Rich and I always play Lady in Red flick. when we yeah. dance. But those films <laughs> have those scenes and they justify and saying it's okay, do that. And you go, no, 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 go talk. To your husband it's terrible it's terrible i and i know whenever i see in a trailer a scene like that i know i'll never see that movie like there are movies i look at a trailer and go yeah. i know i'll never Not see that chance. fucking movie well that movie valentine's day had all those stars and i didn't have one ink link of what's the word <laughs> <laughs> all right we got it put it up on the door inkling hey, that's Inkling. Inkling. valentine's day um, carve that on somewhere jamie fox was no, no, no. in everybody you didn't have one rich rich is up behind one, you rich one, is a ding-a-ling whatever <laughs> does that work <laughs> hold on inkling. hold on he's, he, he's seen the list inkling. Is the, inkling. i see the list what is that those are that's things that's yeah. everything wrong. he said wrong on the Word show he's the pronounced <laughs> yeah he's as yeah. dumb as they come oh, yes, and we heard rupert pumpkin this morning yes, yes we did what shows are you is he watching again Whatever. Uh, <laughs> don't don't get. I still that want that's to push you. Right? the Norm Crosby of a generation. He <laughs> <laughs> really is. Good old yeah, Norm Crosby. One of the allegations list. made against him, <laughs> and the alligators that have done it. We gotta add that one to the list. We have to break for the six. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Is he here? Yes, no, yes. I think he's coming soon. Yeah. Not yet. All right. I'm like leaning in like this. I feel like one of the guys. You are one of the just guys. Just hanging you're out. Yeah, but this is really making me feel like. Yeah, you're leaning on the console. I did, uh, when you guys were over at NEW, he came in. I, I got to do radio oh. with him. This young man right oh, yeah. here. When we were at, uh, you don't even know his name? Yeah, Efren. Okay. Well, right. well, what, what, we what, call what? him Pedro, really. It's easier to Pedro. say Pedro. Or something. <laughs> hey, say you don't want to call Pedro. Do people, always, do, it's Efren. Do people call you Pedro all day long? I was at the gym uh, a couple of days ago. What do you do and there? This, I check out chicks so. and out towels <laughs> and out towels. Say, so people down the same as all so, of us you know hey go on yeah, girl scout cookies so here let me get that shoe for you that looks a little tight <laughs> <laughs> oh my lanta all right so so, <laughs> so you're at the, and, uh, the gym. Uh, this guy came up to me and was like hey pedro so how's working with kenny powers I'm like, uh, it's getting serious, you know. Uh, but that's how we know you. Yeah, I but... know you as Pedro. I don't, I don't feel like I should call you by your real name. I always get, no. hey, obscure guy. <laughs> <laughs> get out of the way. I want to use the water fountain. <laughs> I get Jew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true, but, but, but it's surprising because people, when they see a movie, and when you th begin to think as if it's a documentary, that's a little strange, don't you think? Mm hmm yeah, and mm -hmm. do you figure that that you're going? Um, all right, the character that I play on Eastbound and Down is totally different from Pedro. Right. And you go, I think he would put two and two together, but uh, obviously he's not smart enough to do that. Well, people right. are fuzzy on that stuff sometimes. Sometimes they can, are. Can, can you know, it's a fine line. You can sit in here and say, "Wow, look at all the money I'm getting from this show," and when the cartoon comes out, but then the asshole that won't let you get out of that goddamn character in life. You know what I mean? It's. Well, it's, it's it's one of those, as I say, it's a double-edged sword, but to me, look. That's like a fine line. Uh, Pedro is the character that people have, have yeah, it's a fine line. People, uh, people embrace that character, and it's it's uh, it's something that people can enjoy all the time, every time they watch the film. So, um, 
I'm just fortunate to be a part of it. And and sure, if you want to give me a hug or a picture, sure, why not? I see in your eyes you want us to call you Efren. Uh, we will. Yeah. We will do that for now. On. Gosh, I see it. I see it. <laughs> I see it. You can call me any goddamn thing you like. <laughs> no, what's the worst one? I I I eat dog food on TV for a quarter in case anyone's out there listening. If they want to fucking take a picture with you, can you have your fat girlfriend or wife learn how to work the goddamn camera? I don't want to sit there holding your stupid husband like it's a fucking photo shoot. He's not take kidding. Your, There's nothing worse than a woman uh, trying to use a camera it's, phone. It's fucking, you're sitting uh, here forever trying to sell which your goddamn is it? shit. Your uh, CDs. And the your, flash isn't on. It didn't I'm take sorry. There's yeah. 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 not it enough did. light here. Let's move outside. And here's my favorite is I think I shut it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. then they got to hand it back to the yeah. boyfriend. He's got to turn the camera back on. It's got to take. Three minutes to reboot. Who told you about this? Uh, yeah, yeah. That implies that no one ever asked me for a picture. You don't right? have to explain my fucking sense of humor. They get it. Okay. You don't. You don't ever explain your boss's sense of humor. Okay. Nobody's taking a picture with don't you. you. Okay. Of what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if it's a camera that's got a SIM card, they can shoot five thousand pictures, and it says memory's full. Mm. Ah, uh, yes. I've, that I've had that, too. <laughs> Memory's full. Anything else that happens? Okay, don't you hate it when you're stacking a celebrity yeah, and you're talking about... Here. Yeah, we, we're going to take a break. we got a break. Uh, let's get the plug for Efren, though, because the season premiere... Uh, Are the you season leaving finale, Efren? I, I, no, I, I hope not. You guys are like, like... No, I got to piss. He's got to piss, and you guys no, are like... we're just making sure the, the plugs cats. are there. He's bounding down the, the season finale Sunday. That's and right. And what time again? Uh, I believe it's seven thirty. I don't know. Ah, they'll find it. Ah, you'll find it. You'll yeah. find it. And we got Greg Proops at the comics. You staying, Greg, or you got to uh, go? No, I'm gonna blow because I have to pass out. You're tired, huh? <laughs> I, yeah, I had about an hour and a half sleep. He's, are you performing today, tonight? I am performing today and tonight. Uh, comics. Today you I'll go be at uh, Central I... Park, and uh, tonight I'll be at comics. Such a park today. Set me up. Hook me up. Yeah, yeah? you know where they Dude, put chess go. there? I do this little dance. It's, it's nothing, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's full of gaiety and mirth. Let me just say that much. <laughs> Lemon party. <laughs> and uh, Rich I, is going to be... I call it the Tangerinis. Yeah. Rich, where are you going to be? I'll be at Gotham. Uh, Gotham Comedy Club. All right, we got the situation next. Yes, we can. Oh, boy. Getting ready for the situation. It's not here yet. So now we just all look awkward playing this fucking song. Everybody's um, walking around here. <laughs> Efren, get on mic. Efren Ramirez from Eastbound and Down uh, in studio and Rich Voss. Uh, what in? Everybody's walking around here like like royalty is going to show up. Yeah, have you seen the way uh, uh, Sam and mm -hmm. Travis are walking around here like uh, the situation is uh, coming? He's signing in. He's going to be coming up. And they want to make they sure clear the halls. The situation's coming up. Oh, they want to make sure it, 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 it goes well. Yeah, Mars looking, is all excited and waiting for him. Who? Mars. Mars. I'm, I'm, at, I'm kind of psyched that he's coming. I like him. I'm looking yeah. at page yes. 76 of his pamphlet, and uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's actually one sentence on this page, and then something called the official wingman badge. Yeah, and yeah. there's a uh, just a illustration of the situation issue, I guess. Well, the dumb thing is... What are you is, supposed to do with this? You're supposed to cut it out, but then look on the other side. What? If you cut it out, you're cutting out that. The IOU one grenade. Yeah. Uh, coupon. Yeah. Coupon. Coupon. Yeah, you could give that to, you know, your buddy that you owe him a grenade. <laughs> I don't uh, know and then there's another stitch... talking about. Th then there's another stitch ab fact. The book oh. has many of these, and this one on page 77. One of my abs is a classically trained pianist. Can you guess which one? Oh, God. Hopefully the one that gets hit by a bus. Get it? Because I'd like for him to get hit by a bus. He's a good guy. <laughs> he up. seems like a good well, guy. Well, bank checks. Can you give oh, yourself no, the uh, crash, please? Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to. He's talking about it. I'm on page 84. One night in Detroit, I brought nine girls back to my hotel room. How do you not love this guy? Come on. To what? Watch Ab him have sex with another man? <laughs> Come on. There wasn't nine that night. It was seven. <laughs> it was just seven. Yeah, but the problem I have with that, if you're bringing nine uh, girls back to your hotel room, it should uh, take up more than two pages of the pamphlet. Yeah, and how about pictures of that? That should be a whole chapter. Drawings of your fucking uh, I, I don't whatever have, it is. Oh, oh, that. Sam? I, I don't have nine loads oh, in we a year. We need, yeah, we need Efren's mic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, well, Sam, uh, well, ooh, you're very excited. And the situation is that the situation hasn't arrived yet. Hasn't okay. even, not even in the building? He's not in well, the building. What is that? Uh, he just showed up. He's coming up right now. Okay. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. Oh. We just heard the situation. Oh, yes. Now we know Let's all gel our hair and get ready for this. I'm about to do my abs <laughs> right now. <laughs>
Efren, you watch that Jersey Shore? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped going to the Jersey did Shore. They, did that make me anti-American? Uh, no. no. Okay. <laughs> I swear the first time I got laid, my first time I had sex is in Seaside where they do the show. That's the first time you remember having sex with a girl. The first time you had sex, you were probably six, and there was some creepy neighbor. <laughs> well, hold on, he's acting because his eyes opened up. Uh, <laughs> what? Your eyes are supposed to open up. It's not like that where you have dumb punch lines. All of a sudden, you, Jesus, you turn into Hubble Stop telescope Stop moving bars. around. <laughs> Stop using 1988 references. <laughs> no one talks about the Hubble, oh, really? dummy. Please, you... Anyhow... The first surprised time you I... didn't call it the Hubble. <laughs> the Hubble <Uber> telescope. <laughs> I should. Wow, why, why did this guy uh, wear a disguise from I Hong Kong to Vancouver? That's creepy. Yeah. The guy got younger. He, he That's a disguise. He started a... the flight as a very old-looking man and, uh, and ended the flight looking like an Asian gentleman. Yeah, a he, young Asian gentleman. He what's, had what's this, this prosthetic uh, wow. device on his head, which why? made him look like an old man. And then he took it off mid-flight. Unbelievable case of concealment, they're That's calling great. it. I wonder why. And Wow. He's it's only like 20-something. Like wow. Experiment of uh, security or something. But why like would that. you do it there? Like, why wouldn't you do it when you got to your hotel? Maybe it was somebody he didn't want to see him, him leaving. Maybe it was get the disguise was to uh, leave. I think he's just trying to, like... Pull one over on the airline. Yeah, I, don't know. I think it's kind of a let's look what I got away with. You motherfuckers aren't very good at security. Why go? Because because he has a fake face. Yeah, you should notice a fake face. What, yeah, but that's not what they're checking for. They're checking, they're checking for checking metal for and explosives. <laughs> but don't they also check for? I mean, your ID as you go through the security, right? right? Exactly. Yeah. And do you know how good your so, prosthetic has to, your stuff has to be to them not recognize your TSA. Uh, yeah, they're know. looking at you. Your TSA. Yeah. Isn't that transit at TSA? Isn't that transit the? Uh, yeah. Oh, for them not to. Okay, I thought you said for them not to recognize your TSA. No. Oh. Maybe you should try opening your eyes. <laughs> 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 oh, please, Jeff. I'm sitting in between Rich, these two. I'm feeling uh, yeah. the moment here right now. You know what? Though I noticed Rich fights back way better than he used to. Boss <laughs> always fought back. I don't. I'm no, not it, there's, that. A, there's a different boss <laughs> the last few times. Yeah, he's 55. He's had enough. <laughs> <laughs> 53. 53. 53. Two numbers under enough. liver spots on your head. What's that? I, uh, so the first time oh, I got laid in season. Exactly. Like I don't like your fucking Rodney Dangerfield movements either. <laughs> <laughs> I wish the radio audience could see that. <laughs> I wish you knew Rodney's last <laughs> movement. Dropping dead. <laughs> <laughs> Say it's a little joke. Yeah. That's a gig. Uh, no, that nah, was a giggler. Was that was good. A why, giggler. Why? That wasn't bad. Why, where's the situation? we got to get this over with. Oh, yeah. oh get he's, it over he's, with. He's, I love when an interview has to well, get me over with. I think he's living himself right now. Yeah, he's greasing himself up. It's a good good story. I'll tell you. We're just jealous. Quick. He's going to okay. make five million dollars this year. The first time I got laid. He's make five million just by showing up here right now. The first time I got laid. Uh, Sam, seaside. hold on. Sam is a. The, situ <laughs> the situation is. The situation is here. He's in the lobby. He's hurting. He just wants a little bit of coffee before he comes in. Why is he hurting? Well, the situation party's hard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> does he look like? <laughs> does he look? Does he look like he would, was partying last night? No, he looks. Situation looks like a million bucks. He's got his hair done. He's got a fresh jacket, blazer, fresh T-shirt, nice jeans. His kicks are blazing. Is he all right? They're blinged out. He looks. He looks amazing. Did you say hi to him? Yeah, he's friendly. Nice guy. He's a dreamboat. <laughs> You're an you asshole. You want to fuck him? I would if you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rich. Oh, God. Wow. Rich blast one into the You mic. know it's you and there's oh, a green, a bad one? green paper floating around. Oh, God, it's bad, right? <laughs> oh, so, why don't you just shit. come in? Somebody can get some grab a coffee and I, like, I offer The situation like, here in this wanna... station right now is why bad. Is the situation <laughs> is in deadly odors right now. The rancid fucking. Yeah, oh, that is hard on Pedro's face. I did. I, 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 I mean, uh, uh, I no disrespect. Is it bad no, no disrespect. You find, no I'm twitching. You're being I'm twitching, gentlemen. What's that? I don't think you're being disrespectful. <laughs> he grew up in that. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, that's not. Uh, <laughs> dude, he knows gang funny. members. You're crazy. What? He, he grew up in East LA. You're crazy. Yeah, what's that? He knows gang members. On his hand. Were you in a gang growing up there? That's Chicago, Latin King. Chicago. MS-13. <laughs> little MS-13 hey. action. Hey, those guys, hey well, those no, guys notice pretty, I went quiet on that one. I know those guys are pretty. <laughs> you don't bad. mess with those guys. You I know. Yeah. Hey, back the, off the, the mic. Back off the mic just slightly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I was yeah. just a little bit. I was watching a documentary on those guys too last night. Yeah, what those, those guys. Uh, they don't Netflix. play games at all. Play, man. Oh yeah, mm. they do not play any. There are a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. They're out of LA. They're huge. Yeah. That's that's the Salvadorian gang. Oh yeah. 
They, you don't want to mess with that. What does the oh name of that come God. from? It's, 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 is it a block, a cell lock? There's a weird place. No, that multiple name comes. sclerosis. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, uh, you're real funny. You're going to look funny yeah. with your tongue pulled through your fucking slit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they won't they because they don't know what multiple sclerosis is. Thing, I do not know this man. I do not know this man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what does the name Okay, come? MS stands for Mala Salvatrucha, which means bad Salvadorian. And um, that was derived What's even the after the, the Mexican mafia. What's the 13? Uh, There's a reason for that. I don't, I've heard it. I don't remember what it is. Boss's IQ. <laughs> <laughs> See, get it? I get, oh, 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 what are you kidding me? I want to do a dance after that one. <laughs> <laughs> I love when you go. <laughs> I get rich. Uh, oh, here we go. Well, I thought it was uh, trash. All right. I thought that was the situation. <laughs> oh, there it is. Hey, Mike, this what's up, bro? There's Hello, a situation. Hello, Mr. Situation. It's my seat right Take yeah. a seat. You look yeah. like, what the fuck did I get myself Take into? Take a seat, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> Jim Norton. So you know, how you doing? Good morning, man. You, you know, Efren. Efren. That's, uh, Rich Voss. That's Pedro from uh, Napoleon Dynamite, to your yeah. right. What's up, Kat? Okay, what's up, man? But now he's in Eastbound yeah. and Down on HBO. That's Rich Voss, very funny comic. Uh, Jim Norton. To your yeah. left there, what's sir. Up, guys? How, how you doing? doing? Come over, Anthony. That's Opie over there. What's up, Mike? Nice That's uh, you. young Sam uh, standing there in his little fucking grunge shirt that went out of style. I have a question. I have a Pro question Jam. about an abbreviation. Yeah. It's a, this is this is the first thing I've read. Page eighty-four. One night in Detroit, I brought nine girls back to my hotel room, and then you say, "Listen, girls, I have another city to go to tomorrow. I don't want to be like this, but if you're not DTF." As previously advertised back at the club, then please exit the room immediately in an orderly down fashion. To, down, down to fuck. Down to oh, fuck. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know what yeah. that was. Yeah, he, he doesn't play around. If, if he brought uh, the girls back to the Jersey Shore house and they weren't DTF, he, he yeah. kicked them out. Jim says the same thing, but it's HIV. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know. They film, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, so you guys film in Seaside. I'm going to tell Oh, well, they just filmed in Miami. No, the first season was in Seaside. You're, all right. Well, they, where you been? Where the first Second time I had sex. Been. All and right. I'm going to tell you the story real quick. All right. We went to, it was Labor Day weekend. We go to rent a room at Kathleen Rooms. And the lady said, look, uh, I can give you two guys one bed, and I'm going to rent the other half of the room to a, uh, another person. My friend and I go, Who's, no one's going to take the room. So me and him take the one bed, thinking we're going to have both beds. We come back, and she rented the room to seven other guys, the other bed. So it was nine guys in our room. We go to the, I come back, sexy. I come back, I come back to the room, and this guy's fucking this girl. I go, can I? And he goes, so she's out of the way, and he fucks you? So, so, it's, so, 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 then, so then, this is the first time I get laid, the first time. So then I fuck her, right? I, I come within a minute, and I walk down to the beach and, you know, look at the sunset to reflect my first time. <laughs> Then I fuck some jizz stricken broad. After I fucked her, there was a line out the door. And my friend Brian was like fifth. Right? He was fucking her while I'm sitting on the beach just going just over my head. Reflecting your, your <laughs> first now a man. Very romantic. Yes. Getting, Very romantic. Getting, getting, yeah. getting away from some fat girl that was completely oh, wow. drunk and out Body. of it, not even awake. Gotta and love it was just Jersey. like sticking my dick in roast beef. That, uh, oh, God damn, Rich. That's a quality experience right there. That's, that's, that's like right, right? That sounds like a call. That how how like are you on fatties? Every guy likes to go out and fuck fatties. I, <laughs> even though I don't get laid a lot or I didn't grow up, I never liked fat chicks. Um, you know what? I, I stick to people that are around my size. Yeah. Uh, you don't, you don't yeah. go picking? Um, I guess he doesn't no, no, have to. No, 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 no but I'm saying sometimes guys will just do it just to do it. A lot of guys they, will. They you know him. what? I actually, I actually heard of guys that you know want to you know, take a shot at it. Yeah, they're called because, black. <laughs> <laughs> because they want to. I think I, I forgot who said it. They just want to just see you know what it's like. Yeah. And I actually, I actually, I think somebody said that it was great. I Supposedly know. they're good bangs, fat girls, because they do whatever you want them to do. They go out of the yeah, way. But right. I just can't so do it. Like in the book. Um, you know, it state that uh, the best sex comes from sometimes a, a grenade because she's so happy to yeah, she you know, tries be in a little harder. Happy she's to be there. Yeah. Really? You guys happy have amazing. Be, it's yeah. amazing how many things you guys just say that have become like fucking just common household. <laughs> For, like I shouldn't know. I don't know what a grenade. I, I don't watch the show. Like I've seen it, but I know what a grenade is. I know what a fucking grenade. Yeah, and I know it's not time good. You go on stage. Oh, hey, Rich Boss, everybody. Set it up. Boom. Maybe you should go to the beach and reflect on that great joke. <laughs> I knew he was coming back with something because his eyes started opening. Old Cyclops actor. 
nothing on that one. I no, because Cyclops is one eye, you fucking retard. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever he tries to be smart, he blows it. Yeah. Just be mean and fucking small-handed. You'll be fine. You I'm know what? To be intelligent. I, I, I didn't even know what I was getting into. I yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Actually, little arguments this is definitely a that, situation right yeah, it here. It sure is. Every day it's like yeah. this. This is what we do. I mean, you guys spend, arguments. Actually, it's during the, the gold rush in yeah. American history, oh. men were prone to go with f women who were, were, were overweight. For what? warmth. Yeah. Really? I just took a guess. Warmth? That warmth. Really? That's right. What was the reason? For warmth. For warmth. I just, I just really? took a guess. Take a, <laughs> I, just took a guess. You know? I think, well, I think most likely because she would, she would stay home and the other girls would party hard. And you don't have to worry and, about. And know the another, situation. Another cowboy have, coming over and fucking her. You didn't have to tell us you took a guess because we ha we knew you didn't fucking read up on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, what were you doing before MTV? Right before. Uh, you right before MTV or? Yeah, because now you're like. Or in the steps. Like I, there were steps that I took to get to MTV. Oh yeah. Like yeah, uh, well first, like when I first became unemployed, um, I mean I had no money, uh, you know, I eventually lost my house, you know, my car, I pretty much lost everything, no money. Why, did you, why did you do something that... No, no, I, no, I, 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 I was doing mortgages, and, uh, and the market collapsed, and the money that I had saved, eventually, after mortgage payments, car payments, food, it dwindles down to nothing. Mm. And then uh, I pretty much, you know, found myself, uh, you know, only ever doing mortgages, you know, mm -hmm. an associate's degree in business and 25 years old, no money, and my parents screaming at me. And I'm like, you know, what am, you know, what am I going to do here? So I'm like, you know, my parents are telling me, be a cop, be a firefighter. You know, we need to throw you in the Navy. We need, we need to fix you. You know, you know, just really serious stuff. And in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, man, I, I don't think that stuff is for me. Nothing, nothing against any of that stuff. I just, I just had different, different visions in my head, you know, as, as, you know, there's something out there for me. I don't know what it is. Right. But I just know I don't think it's that. And uh, eventually, um, I was, you know, always in good shape. And then some girl at the time that I knew, she's like, you know, why don't you send some pictures in to New York City? She's like, you know, you have an unbelievable body. She said, you know. There's nothing reason why, you know, you can't, you know, do something with it. You fucker! <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty much. Well, uh, probably after the pictures were taken. No one before. You have yeah, nice yeah, fingernails, after. too. I'm not, yeah. I'm not gay, but you have nice nails. Oh, thank Why do you wow. notice that? Because yeah. right? I, I bite, my, I bite my nails. What's yeah. With you? So, anyways, we said, the, we said... Did you say that? Yeah, right? Well, I'm just trying to be complimentary. His voice bites his nails. He's had fucking horrible nails his whole life. Yeah. So anybody bites could his actually... fingers. Look at him. <laughs> So you sent the <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So what said, else does he do with the fingers? I sent the pictures in. Uh, regardless to say, two weeks later, I get an answer from a number of agencies. Uh, long story short, I got a year contract for you know underwear modeling, but they don't give me. I didn't get any money at it. It was just a contract saying we're gonna pimp you out, go here, go there, go see this and that, and you have to get your own work, obviously. Um, within doing modeling of two weeks, um, you know, I pretty much stumbled upon a casting. Uh, by VH1, so pretty much, um, you know, I was noticed by TV within two weeks, um, and I was wow. casted on a pilot um, for the show that would eventually be Jersey Shore. What was the show that VH1, did VH1 not pick up the pilot? That was fucking uh, I, really, I really don't know what the story was, I really just thought, I really just heard rumors that MTV loved it, and they're the same company pretty much, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. and that and almost like MTV called dibs on it, they, oh. and w at six months later, after... You know, I shot. I had to wait six months, and having six months of my parents telling me, "You did the TV thing, you did the modeling thing, nothing happened. Get you a know, trade. get a job, be a normal person." You know, and in the back of my head, I'm like, "No, no, no! Believe me, this is gonna work out." But in, if you if you really think about it, right? Even if you get a pilot, right? You still have to get on air, oh, yeah. and it's still got to be popular. You still got to be popular. I mean, the odds just were like million to one for me. Right. If, but at the time, I wasn't thinking of that. I was just thinking, I know it, positive. I know I'm gonna, you know, do good. And I really had this feeling, you know, that it was gonna go well. So, you know, I just took a shot, and eventually, you know, uh, six to eight months later, the show was green lighted, and then Jersey Shore, you know, went on, and it was, you know, one one of the biggest shows of the year. And then the second season was. Biggest show or something of all time, and then so on TV over. you're talking about. Yeah, that's how uh, I knew that great. these guys were going to be famous for a long time because <coughs> I was surprised they didn't swap you out, even though you guys were huge in season one. Because normally in reality shows they they, they get a new some cast, out, right? Mm -hmm. But when it, when you did season two and it worked and people weren't like losing interest, but it became bigger, it was like these guys are going to be here.
uh, for quite you you like renegotiated, didn't you? Like they wanted because Viacom does not pay a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, no, no, they 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 don't really. But uh, yeah, we eventually you know came to a happy medium, and uh, we signed on you know for you know number three. We already did three, you know number three airs January sixth. And um, was you that know, part of the contract when you did two that you're gonna do three already? No, that was number three. I want to push number number three down. was that possibly it, there would be four. Are, is there gonna be a fourth? Uh, po yeah, there's Jesus. pretty much. Yeah. What are you gonna go to Europe? I mean, what else See, is there I to mean, do? I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know. I mean, there were, there were talks of someone, you know, if there was a four, it could be, you know, right. you know why do you think, exotic. Shit, it might be. Why do you think the show's so fucking huge? Uh, I, you know what? Uh, I mean, I'm. I, mean, I don't really know. I just, I mean, I, I mean, I think I'm pretty good. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think it's very real, mm -hmm. uh, very new and edgy. This is mm -hmm. something you know that people have never seen before. Right? Were you afraid so, MTV would shut it down when the Italian group started protesting? No, I figured the ratings would get bigger. Oh well, wow. I knew the ratings would get bigger. But <laughs> I was surprised. They sometimes, stopped with it. yeah, sometimes they'll 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 bail on the situations I, like that. I, I hate about reality because I've done a couple reality shows. Just no, do it again. But then it's not reality. You know, you guys see more like in the moment and they're not making you do two and three takes. No, no, no. There's 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 no takes whatsoever. No, I mean, it's, cameras, it's called man. I could sleep in my bed all day if I want. And if that happens, guess what? Nobody's ever going to like me because yeah. I'm sleeping no, I, in my yeah. bed all day. You know, so I decide to do things yeah. all day. And that's pretty much where GTO came from because... You have to stay busy all day. So the first thing we did in the morning was gym. The second thing was tan, and then the, and the third thing there's no laundry machine in the in the place, so you got to wash your laundry. So every day I did GTL, and everybody's like, "Oh, you're like a robot, man." I'm like, "Oh man, GTL's gonna be hot one day." And I was just fooling around. Now Needless to say, it's one of one of the bigger phrases yeah, in the country right now, now. Now, now the fooling around thing. How much of what you're doing is a total goof on people you've known? Or what do you mean you, goof? What do you mean goof? Are you really like that? Oh <laughs> like, no, no, like no! Out no in the I could, I could, I could totally explain that. Um, it, it is, it is sort of like, uh, it's sort of like if you go to a wedding, right? Are you gonna wear gym clothes? No, you're gonna act according. You're gonna be very polite. You're gonna be on your best behavior. You're gonna wear that suit. This is a party show. So guess what? You're gonna get that party. You're gonna get that party atmosphere. You're gonna get that. You're gonna get that attitude. Mm -hmm. I mean, so. <clears throat> There's nothing fake. Um, I mean, obviously, that is just like a minute part of my personality. I mean, if you've seen Dancing with the Stars, you saw that I worked hard and I practiced and I was a gentleman and, and everybody said I was, you know, a really sweet kid and this and that. So every particular situation pretty much calls for either a different attitude, a different outfit, uh, a different look, outlook, and so on and so forth. So you're saying, it's like, I guess it's an exaggeration of that part of your personality, on, which I guess it should be, because... Yeah, nope, it's like if us you're sitting like, here for four hours, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. being yeah. A raging assholes, yeah. Yeah. But you and then we go home and we're only sort of assholes. I'm not nearly the piece of garbage in real life yeah. that I am on the air. Oh, no, you, you are. Really? <laughs> and you shouldn't have said to them if you guys go to a wedding because they don't show up at weddings. Uh, yeah, I showed up. We do for invited. <laughs> I was best man at his wedding. It was really an enchanting affair in a fucking hunting lodge <laughs> in, in the middle Canada. of Canada. Why wouldn't anybody want to go to that? <laughs> and the pictures were taken at a rest area, right? Yeah. 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 I'm sorry we missed it, Rich. By the glory hole. <laughs> hey, uh, in the car. <laughs> Mike, what's the story with the tranny, man? Oh, the tranny? Yeah. Uh, that, you know what? It's, it is not even a story. It is not even nothing special. It's nothing crazy. And there just happened to be a girl in the club or... What you thought was a girl? You know, whatever it was. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, you know, she was talking to me. And all it was was a couple drinks. I mean, um, all it takes. And to be honest with you, I didn't even, I didn't even hook up with it. I didn't even. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't take it home. Mm. I didn't do anything of the sort. There was just a conversation in the club. I'll be very honest. I thought it was somewhat okay looking at the time. Yeah. You know. You're not going to get uh, an argument from the guy to your left, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Situations observing and situations. There, and there is no guarantee that this specific. thing you know, person was what they say it was. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, nobody oh, took it. Nobody. No, right, I yeah. mean, nobody took in the back room and said, "All right, let's let's do the test." I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. That's because he wasn't there. You know, why so, did you do the test? <laughs> you know, but th Jimmy, that's all it was. There was no. There was just interaction. Jimmy knows a little bit about the training. Sometimes thing. of a training. A little bit. You know what? If somebody really looks good, you just sometimes it's called credit for the effort, and you let them blow <laughs> you. You know what? I, you know what? I had, a, I had a best. I had a best friend. Okay, and, uh, who actually, uh, you know 
know, got caught in a very similar situation. Well, we have a best friend. She too, was a very, that. she was very good looking. <laughs> sure. You know, perfect. What you nationality know, do you know? Uh, I think she was uh, African American, maybe. Oh wow. Okay. Or maybe, or maybe half that, and Asian or something. Yeah, usually the Asians but, are good. But you know, it was like a mix between <laughs> the two. And you know, she was walking by us. You know, it was down in uh, Seaside or something. You know, when I was maybe twenty, twenty one or something. And uh, my buddy's like, oh, my God, look at her. I'm going to get that, man. And I'm, and I'm like, I'm at, it's the end of the night. I'm tired. I'm like, all right, man, go, you know, go do your thing. Needless to say, he's making out with her on the corner, doing uh -oh. his thing. And all of a sudden, somebody across the street screams, she's a tranny. And I, <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, oh, so hard. I'm like, oh, man, that sucks for you. The man. worst is when your friends yell, she's a tranny, and you have to act like you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> no! Get out of here, you. <laughs> and I, I think his excuse was, oh, man. We only hooked up, man. I was just yeah. like, oh, yeah. wow. I may have footage at home of a very famous ex-boxer making out with a tranny uh, when I was hosting the Porn Awards. One who was supposed to be my date, uh, but she got a. Uh, uh, I was supposed to. I, I, as a goof, I was going to take this transsexual. Yeah, goof. As a goof. I mean, there's nothing wrong with <laughs> no, no, nothing, nothing wrong with you know trannies, transsexuals. Everything whatever, right with whatever them, actually. It is. I mean, whatever your preference or you you choose to be, that's you. You know, I I mean, sure. Do yeah, you tell that Why to their not? parents? Yeah. It's only it's only a gay <laughs> act with a transsexual if after the makeup comes off. You're comfortable watching television together. <laughs> My name's Amanda. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rhonda. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's just say that this, uh, this transsexual who agreed to be my date for the event, you know, just to walk down the red carpet, uh, was, was arrested. For <laughs> sucking men's penises in the men's room. Oh! She was a fucking keeper. She I mean, was a quality. Uh, what a good egg. Yeah, that was a quality. Jesus, blowing one. guys in the bathroom. That's I know. Quality. That's quality. Hey, we, uh, we had a story earlier about a, a woman that That's had a, a really smelly pussy. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? You've come across that, right? I'll be honest with you. I really haven't that much. Maybe once You're or lucky. twice in my whole life. Really? Well, I was. Yeah. Did you hear the story from earlier where, where this woman uh, insisted that they eat her pussy and they, it smelled so bad they said no fucking way? <laughs> she she, yeah, and what was the quote to, again? She went over to her uh, husband's uh, hotel room and her husband, her ex-husband's hotel room and uh, story him like and that. some other guy were in there and she's demanded, you know, somebody better go down on me. And uh, the husband said no. I guess he knew, and uh, the friend said, "Yeah, I'll do it." And she got uh, all ready, and he got, started getting close to her, and he went like, "Whoa, no fucking way! I was, I'm not going the other." So she pulled a uh, knife on them and said, uh, "I'm getting my pussy eaten, or you're getting your throat slit." Yeah. And the cops were called. And, Is this uh, a true story? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the story of the day. She's Holy real shit. white trash. Uh, her, the picture of her is fucking fantastic. She is um, not not a looker. I was, Maybe she's got a disease. Yeah. Could be some type of yeast infection. I was fucking a girl once, yeah. and I was dry heaving on the side of the bed because her <laughs> pussy was so bad. I was. <laughs> she was like dry that. heaving on the other side. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Watching your DVD. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen? Have you ever fucked a girl? I was fucking this girl from uh, yes. Detroit or something, and that the yeast, the white. Shit. We talked oh, about that. Yeah. 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 That's the yeast. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's awful. Oh, it's awful. I thought this girl was a fucking glue factory. This <laughs> fucking place <laughs> was pouring down her fucking legs. What's the most girls uh, since you've been on the on on the show? What's the most girls that you've uh, that you've banged at one time? In one time? Yeah. You wanna? You really want the truth? I, oh, I absolutely do. You guys are gonna love these stories. I got, I got some good ones. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? Um, actually, uh, one time I actually had uh, ten girls in my room after an appearance. And I was like, I'm going to be honest, I'm not Superman. So I'm like, you know what, I got to start to, you know, you know, eliminate some Thin of these the guys. You know, almost bit. like the, uh, you know, survivor here. And, uh, you know, and, uh, <laughs> fight it you out. know almost of like, you know, start eliminating them. So I, you know, uh, so what happened was um, I took the prettiest girl in the room and, um, and she comes up to me and she said, you know, let's get out these other three girls. They're, they're, you know, you know how girls can be a little catty. Yeah. I don't know what she said. They're bitchy or whatnot. I pull my you cock know, out and watch know, them all like puppies you know, go for the teat. You know, <laughs> and so, see who can nuzzle in there. Yeah. So she's like, she's like, let's get these, these other three out of there. They weren't even that hot anyway. So now we narrow it down to six. Uh -oh. So I am back. This is in the beginning. I'm only in entertainment for two years. But I'm just saying, this is in the very beginning. And I, at the, I'm being honest. I was baffled because... 
there's, there were three girls on one side, on my left, and three girls on my right, right? And they were arguing. They were arguing, you better not tell my boyfriend, and, oh, and this and that. Shit. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, this is, this is crazy. I mean, is this how girls are really like? And then, then after they, they got that squashed, then they, just, then they were arguing, the, the three and the three, who wanted to start and who wanted to finish. Ah. And then I was like, wow. I mean, this just is crazy. Just turn on the TV, let them duke it Dude, out. Dude, I've had you girls wait. argue over the exact opposite reasons. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, I, wow. was, I was like, really? <laughs> on like, the if, if I had fucking six girls yeah. divided by two yeah. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> was this after Jersey? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. This, was, this was probably, you know, the first, um, this was probably like into the, into the middle couple weeks after it aired, probably. So what do you do? Did you bang like do you bang everyone for a couple of minutes just to get the stat in there? That's probably what I would have done. Stat. Just like <laughs> no, 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 no. So what, what what ended up happening was when I got it down to six, and we finally organized what they wanted to do and the whole their whole master plan, we started off with three. Okay, we started hooking up with these girls, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is awesome, you know, three girls, I got three girls over there waiting or whatever. Wait, were you with somebody, a friend, or were you by yourself? No, I had security at the door. Okay. Security at the door. And I had security at the door that had, what happened is, uh, you know, we, um, when I go to appearances and whatnot, um, I have security, and they take the phones at the door at, when you go back to the yep. hotel, because people take pictures, they record you, and needless to say, oh, one girl was slick. And had maybe a spare phone or maybe whatever. So I'm in with the, the three girls and she whips out a phone real quick. And um, I, I wasn't in the middle of doing anything, but I was just about to. Right. And then immediately I jumped up and I'm like, ooh, another eliminator. So, and then I had to eliminate her and her two friends. So now it's just down to three. And then pretty much I went on to the next and the only Flip three your dick like Indy's whip and get it out of her hand. <laughs> Right from the bed. Yes. Wow. But that's, but that's what you got to think of, though. Is if I somebody wants to sell a tape dick. like that, can make fucking you know twenty yeah. grand. And you know what? I mean, people. A lot of people have come up to me all the time, and they're like, you know, so and so offered me ten grand for a story for you. So and so offered me this, and you're just like, oh my god, like who can I trust? Like, would you, you know? make a sex tape, or is that completely like something you have no desire to do? Because it doesn't uh, seem to hurt. I mean, at all. I don't have any desire. I really don't think I have a need to do it right now. I think I'm I'm, I'm doing some, okay right some now. Some yeah. cash right now, and uh, you know. I mean, I've heard of people offering, like, to to do it, and mm -hmm. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good, thank you. And just so you know, too, Mike is uh, he's promoting a book. It's called Here's the Situation. It's like, you know, it, it's yeah. perfect for, like, MTV uh, fans of the show. You would, would love it. And you're doing a signing. Uh, it is, I want to say, tonight mm -hmm. at uh, Borders Penn Station. Is it, or do you just want to say that? I want to say because it makes me feel important to say tonight, ah, like I'm okay. a part of the now. To yeah, say yeah. tomorrow, I'd feel silly. That would be. But uh, it's where I did my, uh, <coughs> my my signing a couple years ago. It's in Penn Station. There's a, there's a Borders right there. It's a great place. From 7 to 9. Yeah. Obviously, there will be a fucking line. Yeah, you don't even have to promote it. So it's get there be... early. You know what? Yesterday, it was, it was in the rain, and... Uh, I was like, ah, oh, man, it's in the rain. This is my, you know, my second book signing, and the first book signing went well. We, you know, we're, we're trying to just go to some some small towns first. You know, let 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 people know that you know I, I care about everybody. You know, yeah, Manhattan, like like six, small like, town. like no, no, no. We went to uh, we went to pretty much like where I was born in Staten Island. So we did one in Staten Island yesterday, or day before, and then yesterday we did one in Jersey because pretty much I was raised in Jersey. And then after that, we're what going part to of the, Jersey? I'm gonna uh, guess Ridgewood. No, no, the one in Jersey was brick. No, but where did you where did you grow up in Jersey? Uh, Monmouth County, Manalba, New Jersey. Oh yeah, I know. And uh, pretty much like yeah. six hundred came to. Uh, Jesus. I mean, it was a. I mean, I, it was it was a it was a pretty good showing. That's for, a tremendous uh, book sign. Of course it is. And then yeah, uh, yeah, then the wow. next day, I think about five hundred showed up for the next day in the rain. You guys. So I was I was pretty flattered and happy and. And, uh, you know, it was pretty What did cool. you think of the South Park episode? <laughs> you guys have a sense of humor? I thought it was hilarious. All right, good. I thought it was hilarious. Good. You know what? I don't take anything seriously ever. You know, I, I'm concentrating on my career, my family. You know, even if somebody said they hated me, I'd be like, uh, you know, thanks, man. Have a nice day. Yeah, <laughs> how, how are your parents reacting now, though? Because yeah. they wanted you to kind of get out of it. they got to be happy now that you're uh, making yeah, it. My, I mean, my mother cries. You know what I mean? I'm able to pretty much, you know, take care of my whole family. <laughs> so it is. <laughs> yeah, mine does too. You know, I'm just, you know, thankful to be here. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's an unbelievable story of... Where I came from, and the odds, and you know, and and what it, you know, pretty mm -hmm. much in the back of my head was, you know, I, I was a dreamer, you know, a, a young kid, and I fell down on my luck pretty much, and and rather than, so to speak, settle, kinda, I kind of just 
kept, kept those dreams and kept going and shooting for them. Do you hang out with any of the people off, you know, when you're uh, not shooting? Yeah, I how's the camaraderie thing? <clears throat> you know what? I do uh, talk to Paulie and Snooky, you know, uh, you know, via text and via internet all the time because uh, I'll be honest with you, some of us are very extremely busy and, yeah. you know, we don't get to see each right. other unless on set. Are there any don't... jealousy? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, they all don't get along, which makes the show good, too. <laughs> I wonder if there's any because Snooky is very... I mean, obviously a huge name, and Paulie's doing very well, but is there any jealousy from, the, from like, the cast members who got a little bit less heat to you guys that actually kind of went through the roof? I mean, as far as I know, no. And I actually, you know, recently um, brought that up, you know, to the guys. I'm like, guys, you know, you know, there's everything's all good between us, and everybody's like, yep. And I'm like, all right, you know, because, I mean, things have exploded. And, um, you know, I didn't, you know, you, you want, um, they're almost like your brothers and sisters. And you want, you wish the best for them. And you would hope that they would wish the best for you the same. Mm -hmm. So you hear rumors, and pretty much you, you try to address them internally before they get out. So I had to dress it myself and it went fine. You, you like some nice abs just walked in the room. We got to wrap up. Oh, you got he's gotta go. oh, you got a lot of shit to no. do, huh, Mike? I want to see his abs. Well, uh, well, Rich, Rich Voss thinks Rich he has better abs. No, I don't yeah. have better abs. Yeah, yeah you've been saying no, it all morning. You're out of your fucking mind, you liar. Show him your abs. No, Actually, e has got uh, the abs. Oh, because I have, I have abs of steel. Yeah, I, 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 I want to stay longer, but... Yeah, 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 they got you all over the place. Yeah, they they got me all over. Are you town, sick of yeah. showing your abs every time yeah, you're out? I, that's why I've, I'll be honest with you, I've stopped. Yeah, I mean, not, that, not that, that I'm never going to show them again, but, but I'm like, saying like enough that, that everybody knows, you know. You want to eat a little bed now? Yeah, that you're no. Successful. What I'm trying to say is like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just get listen, fat, I, uh, <laughs> you know, if I show it every single time out, it, it's going to become you know uh, yeah. commonplace and almost like the product is cheapened. Overexposed. So overexposure. So I've decided. That's how I am performing. So I, I pretty much, I pretty much have decided to, uh, you know, only show it, you know, maybe on the show or on magazines, and and that's really it. Um, you know, and yeah. uh, I want to show people that, you know, I work hard, I have talent, and or I'm intelligent. I own my own business. I wrote a book. I have a DVD. Mm -hmm. My own vodka. I mean, you guys heard about the vodka, right? Eh? No. Well, I, I got a vodka coming out, too. You Bro do? Yeah, Brother Man, Brother Man Vodka. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, what's the name of your vodka? Uh, it's uh, Devotion Vodka. It's the uh, first protein-infused vodka out there. Jesus. The only vodka with protein. And it goes perfect with my persona, you know. And uh, like I said, you know, I'm going to the book signing later. And then we got the uh, clothing line coming out in a couple Jesus. weeks. Dillagaff. Just Jesus. run with Dillagaff. You know what Dillagaff st stands for? You know, what does it sound like? Doesn't look like I give a fuck. Doesn't look like I give a fuck. <laughs> and that's pretty cool. So, you know, that's coming out soon, Sam. too. So, we got the clothing Sam. line, Sam's and uh, everything's going well, cool. and I'm working hard, and I'm happy to be here. I'm actually happy to be here. I'm actually fans of you guys. Really? We, we, I, we've been speaking for uh, since last year via yeah. sometimes text, sometimes internet. On the phone and stuff? Yeah. You know, I, I always wanted to come on. I got to be honest, because a lot of people oh, want wow. us to beat you up for whatever reason, and I, I like this guy. Yeah. I, I, I got to say it. You're a nice guy, considering that you're a regular dude. I mean, when you see a show like him. Jersey Shore, you don't know what you're going to get. You know what I mean? And you seem like a down-to-earth guy that fucking made it. And I, I have nothing bad to say to this no, guy. No, I relate to the workout regiment. We were making fun of your book a little bit because it's, it's a little thin. I'll be honest with you. But, oh, you know. Yeah, but you know what? It's a humorous look. I didn't want to yeah. come out with a serious book at first. You know, I wanted to come out with something humorous, something very similar that everybody caught, what happened? caught up to. What happened? What people, what people <laughs> caught to Jersey Shore. I kind of related to the book. So all the fans that love Jersey Shore, it's very similar to the book. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's successful, the book, then, you know, I can go on to it, maybe uh, an autobiography or a cookbook and so on and so forth. Right. Yeah, just, right, so, just fucking run with yep. it, man. Should we break or whatever? Yeah. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I appreciate we'll being here, man. I, I'm a definitely a big fan to begin with, and I'm, I'm just happy to be here, guys. Well, come back Very and see us. Mike. The book's called Here's the Situation. Mike, the Situation Tonight? Sorrentino. Tonight yes. he is signing. Yes. yes. What is it I'm at uh, Penn Station? Today, Penn right? Station yeah. borders. There will be a line from seven to nine. Get there, and he'll sign and, and whatever. So and he's get in line stop right now. Down at Gotham after the show. There you go. All right, we're gonna take a quick break and uh, finish up. Stay there.